Auburn and Oregon have battled just once for the national title nine seasons ago. In the final minute, Michael Dyer refused to go down, and his stunning run set up the winning chip shot as Cam Newton and the Tigers claim that crystal ball. The rematch is tonight in Texas, week one's showcase showdown. Auburn boss Gus Malzahn has reclaimed play calling duties and will guide a Tigers legacy quarterback. It's baptism night for Bo Nix, the high freshman. Mario Cristobal told his Oregon guys to brace for a knockdown dragout. And one of the nation's top QBs, Justin Herbert, stares down an ordinary Auburn defense, hopes to position the Ducks for a playoff run on a picture perfect night in Arlington, Texas, with the roof shut and plenty of bright orange and day glow green inside AT&T Stadium. This is Saturday Night Football on ABC, presented by Wells Fargo. And the only ranked matchup of the opening weekend, the 11th ranked Oregon Ducks and the 16th ranked Auburn Tigers. And welcome. We are pumped to be here and glad you're with us for the opener of ABC primetime package. It's a rarity tonight. It's a treat. You got yeah. Pac-12 versus SEC. Conference Pride Kirk is a big storyline tonight. Already this afternoon, the mighty SEC took a couple upset losses, a two-win Georgia State team went to Knoxville and beat the balls. Yeah, that was a shocker. And then you saw Mac Brown back in coaching gets a huge win for North Carolina being able to knock off South Carolina and Charlotte. So the SEC, the mighty SEC, as you, we like to think, uh, takes a couple shots. And now you have Auburn tonight in a, a, kind of a one more of a traditional matchup, a big time matchup. And we'll see how the Pac-12 can fare as well. Yeah, the whole conference looking to Oregon to yeah. come up with a signature win. The Ducks, of course, are back in the place where they came close to winning a national title. Of course, in the very first playoff national championship game. Marcus Mariota and Oregon outlasted by Ohio State. Mark Efforts was fired after the 16th season. In came Willie Tiger, but he was one and done. Left for Florida State after a 7-5 and five campaign. His assistant, Mario Cristobal, promoted. So three head coaches in three years, and now year two for Cristobal, who is fast putting his stamp on the program. And he can count on one of the nation's best quarterbacks, Justin Herbert. You know, in a year of the quarterback, I mean, you have Tua at Alabama, you have Trevor Lawrence at Clemson, Justin Fields at Ohio State, Jalen Hurts. You could go on and on and on. Sam Ellinger, Jake Fromm. I think Justin Herbert gets forgotten about a little bit. And yet, here he is on the biggest stage of a five-day weekend and the opening weekend of college football to take advantage and show America he is legitimate. Physically, maybe the most gifted quarterback in the country. And I think if he can get off to a good start tonight against a great Auburn defense, especially the best defensive line in the country, this could really propel him and the Ducks into having a great season. Auburn making some history tonight. The first time in a modern era, you've got a true freshman starting quarterback on opening night. Bo Nix, whose dad played for Auburn. There he is, what, 13 years ago at game My day. gosh, that is going back right there. <laughs> I love I love his story. I mean, he, he grew up his entire life for this night, for this moment. He used to be in the backyard acting like he's Cam Newton, acting like, hey, Dad, can I do this and can I do that? And we're going to get the toilet paper out. We're going to throw it into our trees <laughs> in the backyard when, he's, when his dad was a coach at Georgia Tech. So you just got to love his story. He's waited and waited, and now it's a reality, no longer a dream. Yeah, we're going to see if this talented prodigy can get off to a great start. Auburn, that salty defense you mentioned against Oregon's offensive line. It's going to be fun to watch the battle in the trenches. There is big Derek Brown, one of the top draft prospects and a game wrecker. Can't wait to see their collision with the Ducks touted fronts. Tigers and the Ducks coming up from Arlington. Welcome to the studio, Kevin Degati alongside Donovan Velma and our new teammate Mark Sanchez. As we get ready, downs, no one scored more, have been responsible for more in their OSU debut. And here comes the Ducks. When you look at this team, huge game for the Pac-12's image. The conference just 2-15 and 15 in their last 17 matchups against ranked SEC foes. JV, how you feeling? Who, who you got? I got Oregon right now. Remember, Mario Cristobal under Nick Saban for all those years. And he's bringing toughness. He's not scared of the SEC. Mark, who you got? I'm going to take Auburn. I know the Pac-12 needs this game, but Bo Nix is going to get a big win tonight. Mm. Oregon is back. Auburn is back. Football is back. And we are set up for the tastiest matchup on the menu of the opening weekend in Arlington, Texas. Auburn and Oregon. 
Maria Taylor is back for another season, and Maria, thankfully, all of our travel here was a lot less adventurous than the Auburn Tigers was. We had a piece of cake compared to what Auburn went through. Uh, they were slated to take off from the Montgomery Airport at 1.45 Central Time. Instead, they were sitting on a plane for three hours, forced to deplane after that, and they decided to do a walkthrough, a little bit of stretching, and have meetings in the airport. And then by the time all of that was over, they couldn't even take off until until about 7.50 and arrive at their hotel at 10.30. So all of that meant for Auburn that they had to stay up a little bit later, have treatments late, have dinner later. They kept their schedule today the same, and Coach Malzahn just wanted to get his freshman Bo Nix in here so he could find out where that play clock is. So they got a little bit of a walkthrough in here early today, guys. And yeah, we've all had those travel days, Maria, but Gus Malzahn tried to use that as an example, Kirk, how you got to adapt and be persevere but it was hardly ideal the ducks got here on thursday so about 24 hour advanced trip yeah that, that's called improvising and adjusting when you're in jackson and you gotta do your best to find a hotel so they did they're ready to go though they've had a great month of practice both teams it's go time right away we're going to see the oregon hyped offense against that nasty auburn defense the ducks won the toss and they will take the football so Anders carlson Excellent sophomore kicker from Colorado Springs. We'll boot it away. You got Travis Dye and Jalen Red deep for the Ducks. Interesting. Oregon won the toss. And with that great Auburn defense, yep. they want the football. Mario Cristobal preaches confidence. He promised his guys to be ready for a knockdown, drag out fight. Some of these Oregon seniors have waited for this game, this chance to prove themselves for four years. Here we go. Best matchup in week one. It's returnable. And it's Travis Dye at the two. Follows a block and spins out across the 25-yard line. Best both the quarterback's fathers to make the introductions tonight. And starting at quarterback for the University of Oregon, number 10, my son, Justin Herbert. It was born to be a duck, grew up in Eugene, been through a lot, injuries. As you said, Kirk, three different head coaches, but he has just grown as a leader and ready to have a monster season. But perhaps his toughest assignment begins right now, all year. Physically as gifted as any quarterback you'll watch this year. Important that he does not try to do this alone. They need to be able to establish the run game and have balance tonight to help that offense align. They take an early timeout. This receiving core is incredibly depleted. It used to be a strength for Oregon before injuries to guys like Micah Pittman, their electric slot guy, Brendan Schooler is out with foot surgery. J.R. Waters is a true freshman, and Jawan Johnson, the graduate transfer from Penn State, is a late scratch tonight. There you see Schooler, who's a yeah. terrific special teams player. Some of these guys perhaps back next month or mid-season, but this is tough to overcome. It really is, especially when you talk with the coaches, when you lose Pittman, a true freshman it's been sensational in camp schooler a veteran far right you have juan johnson a penn state transfer who could really help with his size cam mccormick there's pittman the freshman cam mccormick the the big tight end that can help set the edge and the very first play i mean here we are he's had a month to get ready and that shows you that you did wide receiver they had to call a timeout before we even have a play you said it very important to run the football given the inexperience of that position C.J. Burdell is the back. They get the ball out quickly to Jalen Red, and Red darts for about 10 yards, close to the marker. Tonight's Chick-fil-A impact players will look some offensive and defensive guys. Yeah, we're going to do our best we can to get things in tonight because it's a lot of tempo. They're already going for Dell and Reed, the, the skill players, Derek Brown, and Britt, the new linebacker in the middle for Auburn. It's a handoff to Burdell. It's going to be tough to generate rushing yards against this Auburn front. K.J. Britt made the tackle. I believe it's going to be enough for a first down just. Yeah. This is a Oregon team that understands toughness. You know, they, they pointed back to the Michigan State Bowl game last year and really respected their experience against Michigan State. They really felt that that could help them get ready to, as far as the mentality of what they're going to face tonight. 7-5 was the score in that one. <laughs> yeah. Herbert rolling, looking, and fires across the middle over the outstretched hands of Brian Addison. And coverage was by Nikabe. Yeah, great coverage. Good job there. Uh, great coverage downfield. And 
This secondary is a veteran bunch. And Auburn fans that are watching knows that they have a defense, not just a defensive line, but they know that they have secondary people that can blanket you, and it frees up Kevin Steele, one of the top defensive coordinators, to get very aggressive with that defensive line and linebackers. They like to blitz you. Get the ball quickly to the far side. Johnny Johnson gets a block and gets out near the 45. I like the, really doing a good job of respecting Auburn's pass rush and defensive line and just getting the ball out to the perimeter in a hurry. Ball out quick out of Herbert's hands. Third down, they need a long two. Kevin Steele's defense especially nasty on third down. He's moved from the press box down to the field this season. Yeah, and for this very reason, late adjustments and being able to communicate when the offense makes the check, he can get the call in much easier. Play clock at four. Burdell darts up the middle. He's a good downhill runner despite being just 210 pounds. Uh, he was great last year as a freshman. Went over 1,000 yards. <clears throat> and, and I think a lot of times people get so caught up with Oregon with you think about the speed and the tempo and Justin Herbert, they don't often respect the running game of Oregon. And I think that's why I said tonight, Verdell's got to have a night. And they get it out. Red, it was not an accurate throw, had to jump up and made the catch for no gain. And there's a little uh, yeah. scuffle after the play. Yeah, things get a little physical. Walking on the edge. Yeah. Wide receivers. Kind of pushing, I, and you know, a little bit of a frustration. I saw Johnny Johnson involved in that, pushing Christian Tut, getting on top of his helmet and throwing his helmet. Surprised the officials did not see that and call a penalty. Tut is out of the game because he lost the helmet. He's one of the three new linebackers in this Auburn defense. It's the inexperienced area. Herbert rolls on play action, looking for a downfield shot. Has a man running wide open, and it's Johnson. Makes a move, lowers the shoulder, and is banged out inside the five as the Ducks make the first big play tonight. A great job of bringing him all the way across the field. Auburn lost him. They're playing man-to-man -man on the left, playing zone on the right, a combination coverage. Nobody followed Johnny Johnson from the right all the way to the left. And, Chris, one thing you have to say about that, amazing pass protection to give him that kind of time to be able to throw a levels route and, and to be able to get it to that second level to Johnson. 47 yards. Now the Tigers have been very, very tough to score on down here in the red zone. Second best in the country. Play clock is winding down. Three, two, they just get it off. It's Ferdell, and he runs right into the heart of the defense and gets down to the one, grit, and on the tackle. Yeah, that, that battle in the pit, especially in the red zone, is going to be fantastic to watch for our viewers. Five returning offensive linemen. The entire defensive line coming back for Auburn. Auburn was second in the nation in the red zone as far as touchdown percentage allowed. Second. It's because they put nine helmets down inside tight and they shoot those gaps. Makes it tough to run into the middle. Second and goal. Verdell again running left. Hit in the backfield and spun down by Britt for a loss exactly what we're talking about they do a good job of covering up the linemen those defense alignment shoot and it frees up the linebackers to be able to get into some gaps just like that talked about how Kevin Steele does a great job coaching and being aggressive and he relies on his corners leaves them on islands and then shoots those linebackers downhill you either got to go wide or you got to throw the football down here Auburn running a man on very late they're not settled on defense they just get him on the field and now Herbert rolls out tucks it fights stretches scores the Ducks take the opening kickoff 75 yards and the quarterback muscles it in well, there's your answer. That's what you do. And that's a great play call by this offensive staff. Marcus Royal does a good job here, the play caller, getting out wide, giving the quarterback who's athletic the option. It might take a peek to see the leg where it was down and where the football might have been when he extended. But I love the call to give him the option of throwing on the perimeter or running it in because of the athletic ability. It's a Big 12 crew. Rick Lumiere is the replay official. Where was the nose of the football when the knee 
of Justin Herbert hit the ground. It's very close. Worth and it's worth a, a lengthy look here. On the field of a touchdown is under further review. Reggie Smith is the referee tonight. There was kind of chaos in the backfield, and Herbert decided he was going to use that 237-pound body to try to make it himself. Here's yeah. the progressive pylon cam. When does the knee go down? And where is the ball? It's down there. And yeah, now you got to try to find the football. It's obscured by Thomas's leg. If it is overturned, but, 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 but it'll be fourth here's down. The, here's the point, though. You can't see the ball, but what you can see if when you that previous thing where, where it was frozen is you can tell that you can't see the ball. At, at the plane. So if you if you watch right where the knees touched, right where the knee goes down, you could you know, yeah good enough to view that you can see he's about the half yard line, maybe the six inch line. Okay, if it's overturned, it is fourth down, and Mario Cristobal will have an early decision. Sure, and we've will. seen him try to power the football in because that's his mindset. Former offensive lineman coaches the position. He could talk O line with you for two yeah. weeks straight. And he wants the O-line to be the personality of this team. Yeah, and, and when you return a veteran group, you know, you, you like to lean on him. But he also is a smart coach. And he, he when just talked about he respects what Kevin Steele does with his defensive line, how they're able to shoot gaps. It's very, very tough to run between the tackles in the red zone against these guys, especially inside the five-yard line. That's why they went wide there with Herbert. So you think he'll go for it and you, know, you think it'll be muscle versus muscle and try to make a statement on the first drive of the season. I mean such a great drive to open this thing up 10 plays 73 yards. You know last year Washington had moments they had to settle for field goals After against Auburn review, in the opener. The ball carriers left knee was down while the ball was at the half yard line. It'll be fourth down and goal from the half yard line. And the clock will start on my ready for play. And the offense on the field have had this time to talk about it. Yeah, the entire time we were all waiting to see what the answer was. Mario Cristobal had the entire offense around him just in case it was overturned. And it's immediately he knew what to do. He knew the play call and he sent them out. There wasn't any hesitation or any thought about what we want to do. Quick huddle. This is awesome. The showcase matchup tonight. Oregon O-line, Auburn D-line on fourth down. For Dell hammers in. And the Ducks score on fourth down. That's Mario Cristobal. And I just saw a fist pump over across from us from him. You did. Because, like you said, he prides himself on the offensive line and that left side of the offensive line specifically of winning the battle. He's challenged them not just this week, the entire month with Auburn's talented defensive line. Are you going to be able to match their athletic ability and their toughness? And he goes 11 plays, executes there on fourth and short to get the touchdown. Got a true freshman kicker, Cam Lewis, from Charlotte, who has beaten out the veteran. And he knocks it through. So the electric 47-yard pass sets up pure power football, and the underdog ducks drop for his blood. Look from the Xfinity Skycam. You can check out our alternative angle, Xfinity Skycam coverage tonight, streaming live on the ESPN app. This will have the commentary, but a little different look. So Auburn and Bo Nix, true freshman starter, as if the assignment wasn't daunting enough, it just got a little tougher because he will now have to play from behind thanks to Burdell's touchdown run. Four runs to punch it in from the three. But the Ducks offensive line did his job. Yeah, just a perfect drive if you're an Oregon Ducks fan. Six runs, five passes, some quick passes, some tough execution, tough yards running. One big play over the top with great pass protection. Really, that, that was exactly how you would draw it up and hope it would go for a drive to start the game. So Camden Lewis, so I said beat out Adam Stack, the veteran kicker. For making the PAT, will kick it away. Ibnagane will leave it there a yard deep. Patrick Nix, former Auburn quarterback, brings out his son and gets a little emotional. This is nice. And starting at quarterback for my Auburn Tigers, number 10, my son, Bo Nix. Patrick coached him in high school where they won a couple of state championships, Pinson Valley. Bo has been, as you said, waiting for this his entire life. And Imagining Auburn plays, I think, since he's about a sixth grader. I can't imagine what's going through the mind of Bo Nix after those backyard games that he played. I can't imagine what's going through his parents' minds as they watch him jog out on the field for the first time as an Auburn Tiger. Beat out Joey Gatewood, the redshirt freshman. Gus Malzahn back to calling the plays this season. That's another wrinkle we'll talk about. 
And it's an end around on the very first play. Auburn will look to generate lots of rushing yards from guys around the edge, and that's Sean Shivers, the speedy running back. I, boy, if I miss that, how much fun is it to watch Gus Malzahn call plays? He has not done this for the last few years. Says he's oh. back. A little jump there on the right side. Yeah, he says, Offense, I'm going to get back to my roots. 76, five yard penalty. It's second down. He's going to get back to what he made his name with and what made him a $49 million contract. Yeah. 1991, that's the first year he called plays. Did it for 25 years and then took about two and a half years off. You know what he's upset about right now? The Oregon team calling, jumping, kind of a fake cadence to make the offensive lineman jump. That's why he's saying, watch him. Watch them doing that. I don't want it that started. So behind the sticks on second and 12. And they feed Booby Whitlow, who hammers away and gets about four yeah, yards. Yeah, but you're right. I mean, think about calling the plays all this time. And a lot of these guys, after they, they become head coaches, after a few years, they, they do it. And then a lot of times they they, they say, you know what, I'm, I'm ready. I'm going to be a CEO. Tried it for three or four years. Didn't, didn't work out. He said the team feeds off of his energy, as you can see, when he's involved more in the game plan, involved more in calling the plays. And the freshman faces third and eight in his very first series in college. Ducks are showing pressure. Nix immediately has to dodge the rush. Is flushed and will just throw it away. He can expect to see some stuff tonight and some athletes he hadn't seen in high school. Yeah, and, and Oregon's going to do everything that they can to try to mix up looks and try to confuse him. This time, their most talented defensive player is Troy Dye. They'll move him around, and he does a good job of getting in there quickly before Shivers has a chance to pick him up on the blitz. And give the Coy Young quarterback credit for stepping up and then just getting out and throwing it away and setting up a punt. Auburn's got another Aussie punter. Aaron Sipos, a 26-year-old who hit the scoreboard in the warm-up, which he said he was going to try to do. On the return, Javon Holland has a crease. Cuts back, still running into Auburn territory. So the Ducks, long touchdown drive, three and out, and they start the second possession in plus territory after a 28-yard punt return. Saturday Night Football on ABC is presented by Wells Fargo. This is a commitment to better banking. This is Wells Fargo. And in part by Nissan, premier partner of the Heisman Trophy. I'm going to guess that Cam Newton's watching tonight. Bo Jackson, one of the Tigers' Heisman winners on College Game Day, is a guest speaker yeah, this did, morning. Did a great job. Did a great job. Justin Herbert, a key tonight is whether or not he has time to throw. Look at the difference last year when he was pressured, only completing 38% of his passes. QBR at the bottom, a 9.7. No pressure, you can see, all the way up to 87. That first drive, he was not pressured at all. He was 4 or 5 and looks to throw again. Throws it underneath to Brian Addison, the freshman who made just one catch a year ago, but is going to have to step up this year. And part of the reason he wasn't pressured is because of plays like that. Yeah. I mean, he's getting the ball out of his hands. It's an excellent approach against a talented, athletic defensive line. The only time he really held it was that big, long pass that took some time when he hit Johnny Johnson on the over route. Jacob Reel on the tight end in the slot. This is Red going in motion to the right side on second and four. They get it out to Red quickly. He gets a block, and he works his way free. It's a first down inside the Auburn 30. That was a block by the big guy, Breland. Yeah, great job by Breland on picking up the block. But I'm surprised that Auburn continuing with so many quick passes, giving him those easy, quick throws. I, I, I think we saw this last week in a game, Chris, that we call with Miami and Florida. Eventually, you tighten up. You take those, those easy throws away, tighten the cushion up, and try to see if you can make him hold on to the football. Herbert rolls to his left. He is pressured for the first time, and he has to throw it away, and he's pressured by K.J. Britt on the blitz. Travis Dye did the best that he could. As the, you know, the coverage was good downfield. Watch your quarterback. He wants to throw it now, but he doesn't quite trust his eyes in getting the ball out to Addison, so he held on to it. And because of that, that's what allowed that pass for us eventually to get by Dye and to Herbert. It's about a 40-pound mismatch. Right? Yeah. Trying to block the <laughs> linebacker there. Look out. Second and 10. It's a handoff, and that's the quick little running back guy, the sophomore from California. It's about a three-yard gain. It'll be third and about seven. It's really a nice one-two punch that Oregon has. We, we saw these young backs last year when they were freshmen. 
And you know they, they, they had moments that were outstanding, but there are a lot of times the running game went away. And quite candidly, I thought all Oregon really relied so much on Herbert in the passing game. They seem to be convinced this year that they're going to be better at running the ball with Verdell and Dodd. But it's nice to have them both. Auburn's fans turn to make noise on third down. Herbert is going to be flushed and fired. Has a man wide open, and it's red who is whistled out of bounds at his feet, but he will have first down yardage as Herbert made a quick decision. Quick look at the cushion right there. That, now you're going to do an out cut. Makes it a lot easier man to man. A little confusion there again. The outside receiver took the corner with him. The in inside receiver, Red, made a little out cut. And the man that was covering him, the nickelback, dropped back into coverage. Four catches for Red already. And now hammering inside. Die! Dives inside the five. And the Ducks are gashing this touted Auburn defense. Yeah, and they're doing a good job. A double team right here. And then you get up to the second level with Lemieux right there. He's able to climb up and it gives the back a chance to cut in behind it. And Tempo with first and goal. Die has to shed a tackle and battles near the line of scrimmage. Jeremiah Dinson blew it up. Boy, they, they, this gives you an idea. I know Auburn's talented, but right now, Chris, they don't know if it's coming or going. This is great play calling. Good job of mixing in personnel groups. They're throwing quick, they're running quick. Auburn is on its heels, which is very rare to see for an Auburn defense. They brought in a more physical back to sophomore, Cyrus Habibi Likio, at 225 pounds out of Palo Alto. He's in the pistol. Red in motion, fake it to him. Habibi Likio. He's a big body back. He leans down to the one. It'll be third and goal. Here we go again. Yeah. Again, just mixing in different different looks. We've had three different backs. He might say, what's the big deal? Yeah, you keep them fresh. But they all have a different feel, a different kind of running style. This is a power back, and he's running downhill inside the five. Remember last time down here, even though they scored, it was tough sledding between the tackles. So they go with the power back down to see if that can help them. I think they go back out to the edge, get Herbert outside where he can run it or throw it like they did the last time on third down. It took a long time to get the play call in, and Cristobal creeping way out to the uh, yard line on the field to call a timeout. This is an important play coming up. Ducks trying to stretch it to a two-touchdown lead. Feel like, again, there's a potential two plays to get two yards. We'll talk about it. Come back. Ducks threatening again. Oregon got a bad spot. Look at the BB leak here. Watch the right knee. He's still fighting. Watch when it goes down, right? He's not down yet. Oh, no, not down. there. Yeah. Ball's near the one. Yeah. Yeah, it is. I thought, I, I honestly thought that was part of the reason Oregon called a timeout, potentially to give them a little more time to take a peek at it. At the very least, maybe. And every, by the way, every inch down inside <laughs> here counts. Say that again. <laughs> yeah. Verdell is the back on third and goal. There you go. If they can see Herbert rolling. Now looks back across the middle. Fires. Drops. It was Brian Addison who dropped the touchdown and drops a huge problem for this receiving core a year ago. Again tonight. I loved how he looked right. Got the defense all the way into the corner and then came back and threw a seed right into the arms of Addison for a potential touchdown to put him up by 14, but he's unable to hold on to it. But his eyes took the defense exactly where he wanted them to go and then did a nice job coming right back to it. Just couldn't hold on. Camden Lewis for a field goal attempt. Tigers are very good at blocking them. True freshman. Missed it. So a seven-point drop by Addison, a sure touchdown, bounces off the shoulder pad, and the true freshman kicker shanks it. Wow. Another 10-play drive. Everything's looking good. They're unable to get into the end zone. You think at the very least, where they're going to probably get three points, and he, and he pushes it to the right. First career field goal attempt. It was from extra point range, but it never gave it a chance. 33 drops. That was the number recorded by the Ducks receiving core last year. And that's Marlon Davidson. That's one of their senior defensive linemen, one of the vocal leaders and the best D linemen in the SEC. Yeah. Looking at. Yeah, you don't know if that's fatigue or if he's got an injury. Obviously, keep a very close eye on, on Marlon Davidson. Chris, you talked about 
what he means to this this defense. We talked all night about he and Derek Brown, Nick Coe gets so much of the attention. Big Cat Bryant. So the second series for Bo Nix. Tigers three and out with a penalty in the first, and now he's going to take a downfield shot and lost it complete to Will Hastings, and he's into Oregon territory inside the 40. First big play of the young guy's Auburn career. How about that for your first big completion of your career? One-on-one -on -one matchup, and Hastings is back from an injury. Great to see 33 back out there for the Auburn Tigers. 33-yard game. Now next takes off. He's an excellent runner. A true dual threat, which Malzahn loves. Another first down. And see, that's to me Auburn's offense. And I think they, and Sidham is obviously a very talented passer. They weren't able to use him in that fashion. And when Auburn, to me, is clicking, they got a quarterback that can run the football. And obviously, Bo Nix can do that. Great call right after the big pass. And up inside, Whitlow is stacked up. What an incredible turnaround in the last four or five plays. Yeah, that, that, you're trying to figure out a way to try to get your young quarterback after a three and out just settled in. Forget about the whole drama and the fact that you've thought about this your whole life. Now you're just out after this. Now you're just playing football. Now you're out there executing and trying to run this offense. And instead of being down 14-0, it's still a one-touchdown game. Nick's from the pocket. Launches to the end zone, way over the head of Hastings. Little too much adrenaline that time. He was open. Oh, yeah, he, he was open. He got behind coverage. Very same play that they ran to the right for a big play. This time they run it back to the left. And he, again, Hastings, who, if you're not familiar with the Auburn team, he is a player that's very valuable to, to this team. He missed all of last year. Had an ACL in the spring. He tried to work through that and has uh, worked hard to be able to be in position to help this team. He and Eli still both. Hastings comes in motion on third and nine. Ducks rush four. Nix retreats. Flushed. And fires on the sidelines. It's incomplete and way short of the first down. Once again, the pass rush blew it up. Yeah, they did a good job of mixing up their look. And that's what they want to do. You get some movement here. And then right here, you come back onto the inside affects the communication of the offensive line and allows them to get the pressure without necessarily having to blitz that was Bryson Young that time who's very very good on third down and getting after the quarterback Andres Carlson very very reliable inside of 40 10 of 11 in fact he was very reliable except when it was extremely long beyond 50 last year and he is able to knock it through so Auburn takes it 58 yards in six plays. Minute 25 to get on the board, and instead of being down 14, they are down just four. To Cassidy Hubbard with an update from the studio. Michigan, a team picked by some to make the college football four-team bracket in the battle on opening night. <laughs> That's been kind of a theme. Been some yeah. Closer than expected games today. So Herbert and this receiving core is going to have to shake off a very costly drop early in this game. They didn't talk a lot about drops. Well, He's a very positive guy, but you know it's been on their minds ever since oh, yeah. the last. Yeah, it's like a guy that has had a problem with fumbles, you know, or an infielder in baseball that's had a problem with making errors. You know, you, you don't want him to overthink it because then it becomes uh, as much of a mental issue as it is a physical thing. And they've worked hard to kind of get the drops out this offseason and into camp. They said things have been outstanding in camp and Addison dropped a, a, a definite touchdown there to put him up by 14. Can I question the work ethic? They said the receiver is among the hardest workers on the yep. team. Yep. Carlson's kick. And the guy's going to leave it there. Our target command center coverage of tonight's game is streaming live on ESPN3 and the ESPN app. You get all kind of different looks. You get the stats down the middle. ISOs with the two benches. Quarterback ISO. Where are you going to put your eyes in the command center? That's up to you. Oregon has already moved the football 116 yards on his first two drives. Perfect balance. Ten runs and ten passes. But this is not the good field position they had the last time. I want to see the adjustments that Kevin Steele makes as a defensive coordinator with, against these quick throws from Herbert. It's Verdell sheds a tackle and he's off and running. CJ Verdell makes a cut. 
and works his way into Auburn territory as a flag comes in very late in the play. Riddell, who had 1,000 yards rushing and 300 receiving yards, the only guy in the Power Five to do that. You see here that Dallas Warmack, the right guard, nice job of opening up that crease. Face mask. Defense number 24. 15 yard penalty added to the run. First down. They got the co captain safety, Daniel Thomas, to tack on 15 to the end of the run. So the Ducks immediately near the red zone again. Yeah, that right side of the offensive line that time on first and 10. Linebacker out. Remember, they're replacing a couple veteran linebackers who are. You know, of kind of the glue in the last few years. These guys they feel are more talented, possibly, but not as experienced. Interesting how they lined up. Once they were able to control the initial surge of that defensive line, there's nobody left there to slow down Verdell. Guy spelling Verdell. He's got the football running left behind those offensive linemen and knocked down at the 20 after getting three. Marlon Davidson, who we showed you. A little earlier was is not out there as far as I can see. That's something again we want to pay very, very close attention to. Davidson, Brown, and Co. all coming back for their to play one more time together. Herbert Pumpfick on second and seven pressured. Buying time and now we'll loop the ball to the end zone. A risky jump ball caught for a touchdown. Spencer Webb went up and got it. Won a battle. And that's trusting your receiver. Absolutely. Good job by Herbert keeping the play alive with his athletic ability. And the big fella went up and made a play on the football. But this is taken away. Remember I said, what adjustments are they going to make? He wants to throw the ball here. But Auburn does a good job of coming up and taking that away. Right there, they jumped it. Now he's creating. Now it's backyard football. Who can I find? He gets hit as he throws it. He's smart enough to go up and throw it high, which was important. And it gives Webb a chance with his size to make a play on the ball. First career touchdown for the 6'6 freshman from Sacramento. 6'6 beat 5'10 corner Javaris Davis. And Herbert makes it 29 consecutive games now with a touchdown pass. That, that's that's the athletic ability of Herbert gets hit by Nick Coe as soon as he throws it so he can't get his lower half into the throw completely using just his arm puts it up high in the air that's the experience and the intelligence of knowing the size advantage of having Webb matched up against Davis Davis is grabbing his jersey and Webb is just get anything he can <laughs> anything he could grab his first career catch is a touchdown <laughs> against Auburn well, we talked who's, we talk who's going to step up. Schooler's down, Pittman's down, the big tight end, McCormick's down. Who's going to be the guys that are going to step up in the Oregon passing game, the receivers? And there's an example of a guy like Webb, a freshman, stepping up. And you talked about against pressure last year wasn't ideal. He was heavily pressured. In fact, hit as he threw, yeah. and it was a pretty ball. It sure was. Auburn took away those those quick throws on that play they actually took it away and it created that pressure made him have to improvise that was an improv play but I had a sense that maybe Cristobal given the toughness of Auburn's red zone defense might take some shots from what he calls the high red zone 25 30 yep. 35 yard line Should. it's another long touchdown drive 75 yards this one took just three plays and a minute six set to Chip Kelly Oregon type touchdown drive. And the return. Benagany knocked down across the 20 yard line. We will head off to Louisville tonight and on Monday night see Brian Kelly and the Fighting Irish take on the Louisville Cardinals. Scott Satterfield's debut as head coach. It's over on ESPN at 8 o'clock Eastern time. We'll get a look at Ian Book who hopes to really improve on last season. Maybe be a little more assertive, a little less cautious at quarterback for the Irish this year. What do you think? Yeah, uh, I mean, a, a guy that I think has tremendous opportunity to have a big year. He's got some new skill around him, which I think will be exciting to watch. And uh, anytime you get a, a chance to watch Notre Dame playing on the road on a Monday night, it's be a lot of fun. So now an 11-point deficit, and Nick flips it in the flat. 
And it's caught by Eli Stove, another receiver who's coming off an injury plague season, Kirk. ACL last year, played almost no football, but had a big 2017. Sure did, and they've missed he and Will Hastings, and, and right now they're the only two receivers that have been able to make a catch for young Bo Nix. Eight-yard gain gives him a nice second and two. He's still got the football on the edge, and he's got some blockers, and he's got a first down out near the 35. You know, I asked Gus this week if, if Bo Nix's offense with his father, Patrick, who obviously played here, but he's a coach, and he was his high school coach, I said, was it the same offense? Is it, was it kind of turnkey for him to come in here? He said, not the exact same offense, but very, very similar, which has helped Bo Nix when he enrolled early, went through spring ball to pick up the offensive scheme. On the first down, it's Whitlow lowering the shoulder and making about nine. Almost every play in high school was a run-pass option for Bo, Patrick said. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of responsibility. Yeah, he it began is. starting in high school, by the way, as an eighth grader. Yeah, and, and he's had to deal with that pressure really the last four or five years of living up to his dad and everything his dad accomplished. There was nothing there. He was pressured off the edge there, just fired it in the ground. That was... Kayvon Thibodeau, the very highly touted true freshman. Yeah, but there was no one to throw the football to. I mean, it, it looked like there was a miscommunication. They're trying to seal the edge, but it was hard to get outside of Javon Holland, who had actually he had grabbed onto the intended receiver. That's why I think some of the Auburn people are a little bit upset. He just grabbed onto his jersey to stop him from going out for a pass. They're all upset because the Ducks fans are <laughs> intentional ground. Everybody's hollering now. <laughs> yeah. It's third and two, final minute. A wild first quarter dominated by Oregon. Whitlow, the bat. And it's an awkward snap, but Whitlow's going to make the first down anyway. Nick's kind of bobbled it before handing it off to Booby, who gets out near midfield. Yeah, and the jet sweep, a lot of times they use that just to affect the eyes of the linebackers and safeties. That time Eli Stowe goes in motion, affects the eyes just enough, and they pick up the first down, and now Nick's is out to the left. Talked about the direct snap to Whitlow. Yeah, this is Whitlow in the Wildcat look. Not much deception. He's trying to buy time. And he's able to be patient and dive forward for another good first down game. They're making a lot on first down every well, time. Yeah, you know, I, I think it's pretty clear when you see 28 lined up in the Wildcat. I mean, he's, get, he's there to give you a little wrinkle and run the football. But even though they knew it was coming, he still picks up about seven yards. Clock ticking down. Let's see if Malzahn wants to run another play before the end of the quarter. Harold Joyner is the back. We'll rotate a whole lot of them. And the clock will expire before the football is snapped. So Oregon, a pair of long touchdown marches. They missed a chip shot field goal. Field goals all the Tigers have. End of one in Arlington. Back after this message and a word from your local ABC station. The super big Samsung QLED TV is made for football. Great start to Saturday Night of Football on ABC, presented by Wells Fargo. Auburn on the march, trying to cut into an 11 point Oregon lead. Ducks with 176 yards in the opening quarter against the vaunted Tigers defense. Whitlow hit hard and stopped short. Jatarvius is his name, but the family has called him Booby forever. We have no problem with that. No, not at all. I'm very impressed. You, you, you're doing double duty these two weeks. So you got names. I mean, I can't even imagine the tennis names, and I know you're used to most of them with all the matches you call, but I'm doing uh, the best I can just with the college football names. Well, Oregon gives tennis a run for its money. <laughs> names, no, doubt. no doubt. Now they need two on third down. I got a few names. I hope they don't make a play. I know what you mean. <laughs> it's Whitlow. He slips a tackle. Really nice. has to earn the first down near the 40. Nice, tough running. It was penetration. They were able to get into that backfield. And it looked like they may be able to get him for a loss. Paliu is able to get there, but the arm tackle will not slow down Whitlow. Those strong legs get him the first down in that second effort. Gus going to the ground game in what is a crucial drive, even though it's early second quarter. Harold Joyner takes his turn in the backfield. 
But Nix, a play action. Watches downfield and has Joyner wide open out of the backfield down near the 10. The old wheel route. Yep. Trying to hide him back here, Chris. You found him before the play. They're able to slide him. Not The linebacker just did not pick him up. Nice job. They've kind of waited. You know, Gus Malzahn says, I script the first 10 plays. I give them all my personnel groupings, all my different formations. We look upstairs how they're adjusting, and then we go to work on how to try to attack them. They save that wheel route for the right time. Right, your freshman out of Birmingham. It's a deep rotation of backs. It's Whitlow back in the game, but the Ducks get very quick penetration. Yeah, I, I think Bali you in there. Bali you at 99 gets in there again. He almost got in a little earlier. He comes right in here off the edge, able to split the tackle and the guard. And I'll tell you, he is a big man, but has tremendous burst off the line of scrimmage. He's about 295 pounds, 300 pound player, but makes plays off the edge of this defense for the Ducks. And see what they call on second and 13. Sean Shivers, the speedy back to the right of Nix. It's a rollout and a throw into traffic, and it's intercepted. Thomas Graham with the pickoff, and the true freshman makes his first mistake tonight. Yeah, the veteran Graham baiting him waiting for him to throw the ball and he actually throws the ball behind Williams and it allows Graham to be able to catch it off the deflection of Williams's hand. Well, and it's a learning experience. His dad knows that. Ducks take over, up 11. And the seventh career pick for the junior corner, Thomas Graham. It was the Ducks, the football back at the 12. Marlon Davidson back in the lineup. Great to see for Auburn. Red in motion. Verdell is the back. And Herbert's looking to throw. Flips it short. And it was going absolutely nowhere. It was a low throw anyway. Let's go back to the interception for the true freshman. Not great spacing in his defense. But you can see he throws it against his body and back behind the receiver Williams right there and you're talking about a defensive back corner in Graham who tonight is making his 26th career start a first a rookie making his first that time the experience of Graham pays off second down Verdell takes off slips the tackle man does he accelerate quickly he's got a first down across the 25 you remember all the Michael James when he could go and Kenyon Barner when they could say he's that fast now I'm just saying he they the, the backs for Oregon this year yeah. have a burst to them that's not common. And, and Michael James was a hiccup fast. But <laughs> it, when you see these Oregon uniforms and you see backs taken off, it just makes you reminisce a little bit about the glory years of Kenyon Barner and Michael James. Malzahn did call Burdell a one-play drive kind of running back. Means he can he take can it go, to the man. House. And he's, he's even quicker this year, obviously, an entire year in that weight room with the crazy man. A lot of shifting around pre-snap. <laughs> the crazy man. We'll show you the crazy man. Play clock down at three. It's Verdell again, this time running right. Man. Doesn't look like much, but he gets seven. Also getting a good push up front by that offensive line. Maria, what's going on on the Tigers' sideline? Well, the defense is really struggling to diagnose. I saw Kevin Steele bring the entire defense together after the first touchdown. After the second, it was linebackers and secondary. He told everyone, just calm down. Marlon Davidson, it was a right ankle that he injured, guys. So he's had okay. it taped and kind of struggling through that right Thank now. you, Maria. Travis dies, spelling Verdell, and he hammers into the middle. They are not afraid to test the midsection of this Tigers defense. Didn't get much there to be third down. And, and this is one that later you're going to see. Watch the edge of the defense collapse. This is one that I, I bet you you'll see Oregon come back to because nobody's respecting Herbert, who can run the football. Some point in this game, somebody upstairs looked down and saw them collapsing down on the backs that are having some success. Eventually, they're going to come back to Herbert holding on to that ball and going down the sideline. Ducks are 2 of 4 on the third down, need three. Got to hurry. On the edge. And swarmed and dropped right there is Johnny Johnson. 
Tigers defense was ready for it. Igbenogany. Yep. Igbenogany. Great play here. Getting off of the block and then being able to come over and help out, forcing him back to the inside. Nice job. Tight coverage that time on third and short by Auburn. Blake Maimon in the punt for the first time tonight. Christian Tut, who's the Tigers returner at the 20. Auburn defense finally gets Oregon off the field. Two touchdown drives and a drop touchdown missed chip shot with the first three possessions. Oregon move there on the left side. We saw so many penalties, so much sloppiness last week. It's Oregon's first penalty tonight. Pretty well played yeah. game so far. Very strange after snap. last week. <laughs> Ball start. Oh man. Offense number seven. That was brutal. Five yard penalty. It's fourth down. Cristobal, of course, is the next hurricane. He was watching that game. Yeah. Just exactly what you said. He put the tape on. He did a cut up and say, guys, don't do this, this, or this. I can't tell you how many coaches I talked to this week after that yeah. game that said, man, I, I'm so glad they played that game. <laughs> I watched it, and then I called my video guy that night and said, I want a tape for tomorrow to show the team after practice. I've been pretty good at coming after punts. They peel back this time to set up a return. And Maimon boots it deep. And this is Tut. Gets a block and an immediate flag down. It's a nice looking return out near the 45, but this is going to come back. The gunner illegally blocked. Big Ben Hagany. He's all over the field tonight, which is going to test us all night. <laughs> sure. Is. Parents from Especially Nigeria. Me. During the return, illegal block in the back, receiving team number four, 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down, timeout. So, in the starting corner, the special teams commits the penalty and it negates a 24 yard return. Saturday Night Football, presented by Wells Fargo on ABC, is brought to you by the Ford Expedition. Built to be a better big. And Pacific Life, 150 years strong. Protection and retirement solutions for your future. Now just a taste of the QB tradition in Eugene, and of course, Justin Herbert continues it in this beautiful night in Texas. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear, recognizing those who strive to rise above the rest. Goodyear, more driven. So Bo Nix, in part, got the job as a true freshman because Malzahn wanted a guy who would, quote, take care of the football and make smart decisions. Now he's got to bounce back from a bad yeah, decision. That's what I want to see is how does he handle that adversity after the interception? You know, how does Gus Malzahn, where does, he, where does he put him to give him a chance to be comfortable? Well, they give it to Whitlow, who, again, is such a patient runner, waits for a block and makes something of nothing for free. Go back about two or three years ago when Auburn was humming with Kerryon Johnson, if you were to tell or ask me back then what made carry on Johnson so good there are a lot of things but one of the things we always loved to watch was the patience that you're talking about and when you mix in a running quarterback with that patience it's a great tandem in the backfield Shivers is the back and now the Ducks have jumped outside so it's a free play and Nix tosses it downfield to Sal Canella who's fighting hard near the 40 yard line watch the offensive line Chris they are well coached here watch watch even outside. after the play Hey, look at this. Look at this. I'm not moving. You said the, the penalty is three play. Result of the play. They get the First big down. yards. Nice job. There's the young quarterback yep. using that snap count. Linemen doing their job and takes advantage of that free play. Yeah, very heads up. Got 21 yards. And now it's Shivers. Let's talk about the great tradition of running backs. Cadillac Williams, one of the legends here back, coaching the backs now for Auburn. Yeah, how great is that? Especially if you grew up an Auburn fan and now you're in the backfield. You look at Cadillac Williams as your position coach. Pretty good hire by Gus Malzahn. He said he, when he once he made a decision, he was done playing and he wanted to get into coaching. His dream was to get back on the sidelines on the planes. Cadillac and Ronnie Brown. Remember that oh, man, you're nasty. 04. Wasn't fair. And around the edge, it's another jet sweep. This is Matthew Hill. He's a redshirt freshman. First touch 
of the career. They expect to see him do that quite a lot this year. Maria? As you're talking about Cadillac Williams and Booby Whitlow says the difference about having him on the sidelines, he's the best that's ever done it. And the technique that he breaks it down with is what's making him excel. And so far we've seen some of that here tonight. How cool is that? A, a great runner, Maria, able to pass down just little tips of vision or, or cutbacks or anything that might help, have helped his game. And he's young enough, these kids probably really can relate and appreciate that. Third and short, they have the speedy back Shivers who weighs less than 180. He's the one on the field, and now it's the Tigers' turn to flinch. Five-yard penalty, third down. Raquel Harrell, the senior leader of that group. And they went back to the well one too many times with that. They did such a good job of staying in position on the one that worked out. This time Harrell, unable to hold on, puts the young quarterback in a much tougher position now at third and seven. Five senior starters up front. They held their own in camp against that tough defensive line. Not easy to do, which gave them confidence coming into the season. Now it's Whitlow in a tailback. I'm out. Gus Malzahn didn't like the look. Yeah, only four seconds on the play clock. So in third and seven, inside of seven to play before halftime, Auburn trying to prolong a drive and cut into this Ducks lead. Take a timeout. Third down when you come back. Hubbard here and let's take a look at one of AT&T's best performances. The SEC has already suffered some upsets today and there's a threat of another one. Missouri at Wyoming. Xavier validates 61 yards to put the Cowboys up 17-14 in the second. Chris Herbie back to you. Cassidy thanks. There's Anthony Schwartz. You see he's got that left hand wrapped. He could contribute tonight the fastest man in college football but only in a limited basis. Can't really catch a pass with that. So they're without him so far, and then third down, Mix stands and delivers, lobs it down the sidelines, and is almost intercepted. Yamador Lenar just off his fingertips, fourth down. And we've talked so much about some of the other coordinators, but Andy Avalos comes over from Boise State to Oregon. They made an adjustment to the defense this year. I'm going to tell you, he is off to a good start against a young freshman. He wanted to mix up looks, disguise coverage, give him one look pre-snap, go to another look after that. Right now, off to a great start here in this first half of mixing up the, the calls. Yeah, those Broncos defenses, they were known for disrupting, creating negative oh, yeah. plays, takeaways. Yeah. They had a big... Big day today themselves, they by did. the way. That's what Cristobal is looking for here. Sipos punts it from the 10 yard line. Holland type open. Javon Holland still going. Makes a cutback into over territory. Can he get the sideline? High stepping out of bounds. They mark him out inside the 10. An electric return sets up Oregon again. Well, I tell you, at the very beginning of this, an outstanding job of avoiding the push or the block in the back by the Oregon Ducks right there at the beginning. Did a nice job, and then it's just about building that wall, and he almost is able to take this all the way to the end zone. But it started at the very beginning. Oregon trying to do a good job of not pushing anybody in the block in the back and I think they surprised Auburn by returning it back into that boundary for some reason because there was nobody there to stop him the punter just got leveled by a big body so now Oregon first and goal from the nine trying to build an 11 point lead Verdell is the bat As they try to chase him down. Will he get there? Not quite, but a huge scoop and almost score by the junior from Georgia. Remember how we talked that he's going to eventually want to pull the ball and get to the outside? That's exactly what he was going to do. He's following the tight end Breland, 27, to go around the corner. But he was in such a hurry, he didn't take care of the football. And how about the effort, by the way, of six. Christian Tut trying to get in the way of Herbert, trying to get in the way of anybody that he can before eventually Addison catches him up. But watch, see 27 to your left? He's going to pull it and come around. But instead of being able to pull it, Verdell hits the ball and jars it loose. 
And the Auburn defense made a similar kind of play against Washington a year ago in the opener. It was a monster play that turned things around. How about Big Cat? It's not his given name. Marquiviest, but Big Cat with a K. Great play by Big Cat. Great effort by Tut to try to get him there. 83-yard return, first and goal. Shivers motions in. And instead, it's a misdirection play. And it was Eli Stowe, a little trickery near the goal line, fooled no one. It's a loss. It, it took all Addison had to chase him down to stop him. And now Oregon gets a chance here inside the five-yard line defensively. And the very first play, they get penetration. This is where Auburn loves that, that kind of that sugar huddle, that quick huddle. They'll break the huddle fast, hope that Oregon can't adjust and snap the ball quickly. It's Whitlow at the back. Nick's under center. It's a rarity. And a fumble exchange, a scrum. Nix is battling to keep possession, and it looks like he just did. Wow. Well, he never had his hands on the ball, and Hurrah 77 tries to seize it as he's pulling. He tries to put his hands on it, but Nix never had the football in his hands. He was trying to pull out so quickly that he never got a grasp of the ball. They don't go under center often, Kurt. That cannot be easy, right? It just looks, yeah, no, it's especially down there. You get a center who's doing a reach block, reaching out as he snaps the ball. That's a tough thing to do. They've gone backwards on two plays. Now it's third and goal from the seven. Knicks rolling. Coming back this way. Chased. Still alive. Fires. Ends on in traffic. Almost intercepted. Knight Nick Pickett was there. A dangerous throw into traffic. Lucky that it wasn't a turnover, but the Ducks defense makes a stand back up. They sure do. How about the dangerous throw by the freshman? Throwing it into three different white jerseys, throwing it back into the teeth of the defense. It's a lot like the first pick. Again, young guy, but very, very fortunate not to throw an interception there. Love that he kept the play alive, should have just thrown it away. Carlson for the second time tonight makes good from 25 so the 83 yard fumble return the hustle by addison exactly to chase big cat down and auburn settles for a field goal let's go back to this play the hustle play by addison that saved him from giving up a touchdown watch him at the bottom actually takes a hit here from whitlow right there gives him a little shimmy and then he realizes i got this guy i've got him in my sights He's not scoring a touchdown. Not tonight. No way. That effort right there, and then the defense getting the three and out, the progressive pylon cam shows you that effort, and he, they end up having to kick a field goal. Good job, Addison. Who's the guy that runs down the, the fan on the, along the warning track at baseball games? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's what, that's, <laughs> that's what, what that was. Like. That's exactly right. He blows fast. Was it, was it the flash? <laughs> he always wins. I don't know if I've ever seen anybody. <laughs> I saw him lose in London. He really? was in London at the Yankees-Red Sox game. He did not get his oh, man that They night. set him up with a track star. <laughs> <laughs> what an electric, big play filled first half. No big play here as Travis Dye takes a knee and we say hello to the Bears lair. Chris Felica with our Affleck trivia question tonight. He's promised a tough one. It is a tough one in Oregon with the lead and Herbert about to take the field and see if the Ducks can close this one out. It feels like they should be up more, but who was the last oh Pac-12 quarterback to lead his team to a victory over a ranked SEC opponent? Ranked SEC? Mm. Ranked SEC, SEC? They've lost the last nine, so you got to go back to the... It's going to be back a few years. Did Liner beat him? Jeremiah Masoli? Liner's a good guess. So I'm just trying to go back to think of Masoli. Remember Oregon beat Tennessee one year. Were they ranked? I don't know. Verdell knocked down hard. Gets about a yard by KJ Britt. All right, Bear. That was quick. You've got a good, you've got a good combination there with, with, with Tennessee and right, te right team or wrong quarterback. It was UCLA. UCLA. Uh, Kevin Kraft Ooh. beat. Uh, oh. Kevin Kraft, Kraft, the immortal. Beat, beat, beat the Vols out of the Rose Bowl that wow, there in 2008. Bear. That's a good one. Feels like the Bruins are not close to beating a ranked SEC team these days. In a ways no. to go. Nope. Second and nine. Herbert play action. Thought about taking a downfield shot. Now just tries to check it down. And now will take off and run and gets about six. 
Why did he go deep there, Kirk? He sure did. Coverage took it away. But how about the protection? All this talk this week about how in the world is Oregon going to protect Herbert from this defensive line and from this pass rush and give the Oregon offensive line. It's good coverage. Let's give the coverage credit. But the offensive line giving Herbert enough time to be able to look downfield. Now in third and eighth, there's a flag way back late in the flag. defensive backfield. Yeah, it came down late. Sometimes a illegal substitution. I think it might have been a late hit on Oregon. Near really? the sideline, yeah. Johnny Johnson possibly coming in late. I, it was a late flag. It was the only thing that I saw with an Auburn player going down. It was well after the whistle after Herbert went out of bounds. But that was well after the play ended, too. I mean, they were lining up ready for a third down play when the yeah. flag came in. They're still huddling up this Big 12 crew of Reggie Smith. If it is a personal foul, it really makes it third and darn near impossible. Yeah, so I think it's. I don't know if that's what. Watch three. See if you see three flash out of bounds, and there's the hit. It was definitely dirty. Personal foul, blindside block, offense number three will be penalized half the distance to the goal. Wow. Replay. Second down. Oh, okay. So they're not going to say it was after. So it's a the play. Boom. That's a new emphasis here. The blind side block. They don't want to have unprotected players like that. That used to be a part of football. Sure was. Made every highlight reel. Yep. Got the bench going. Yep. That was 15 yards. Dave Katai giving us a thumbs up. So he likes the fact that we pointed out the yep. new emphasis here. It is. Plus it was completely unnecessary. Repeat second down. Different approach, obviously, now for Marcus Arroyo as the offensive coordinator. Got to get to the 35 for a first down. Herbert's inside his five. Makes a long throw to Breland, and he'll get some of the yards back to make it third and reasonable. It'll be third and nine. Now he was looking at Breland the whole way, did a good job of just kind of keeping his eyes downfield, trying to get that defense to drop as far back as they could, and then just dumped it down to him. He is, Breland is a fantastic receiving tight end. Really a wide receiver that, that is lined up as a tight end. Guy that's been around and, and played a lot of football for Oregon. You'd expect them to use a lot of the play clock. Gives them a chance here. That play gives them a chance here on third down. It does, but if they don't make it, you don't want to leave Auburn any more time than necessary. Fidel is the back. Here comes the blitz, and there's the first sack of the night. They got him off the edge. Jeremiah Dinson, one of the co-captains. Well, they, they bring him up. Wooten is also up here, up tight. Denson's out here. Wooten's right here, and he's able to work to the inside to be able to find that crease to be able to get the pressure. Verdell had to make a choice. Denson to the outside, Wooten the linebacker to the middle, and the combination of those two blitzing the quarterback, they were able to get to him. Maimon back at his five-yard line. Auburn has been peeling back to set up the return so far tonight. Let's see if they come after it. They're bunching the middle. And yeah, they do come after it. And the punt is a good one. Good protection. And Moan booming it. And Tut will retreat and run out of bounds. You cannot ask for better execution on a punt than that. And the Tigers will start from their 25-yard line with 2.05 to play. How about this? This be a good one. You kidding me? And Clemson next Saturday at 3.30 Eastern time. Then on Saturday Night Football, Reese Davis will... Join you. I'll be doing U.S. Open Championship weekend duties in Austin, LSU, and the Longhorns. Another one of those Man, I... statement games, non-conference games that mean a lot early. Not going to be able to sleep this week. I mean, he's I got great tennis, but you got great college football. Yep. Unbelievable Saturday next week. Today, there weren't, other than this, this is the only ranked game of the whole weekend, five straight days. We've had some fun games. Next week, we got some amazing I, I had my eye on that Clemson Georgia Tech game on a, on a scrappy preferred walk on out there yeah. was making an impact Man, that was special night. Out there was not cool. mix on the roll looking back to his right takes a downfield shot and basic ready free diving catch but a flag he was dragged down to prevent the long play by Pickett, who comes up limping and will go down to the field it's the kind of interference penalty you're sort of coached to take right well, I, i'm surprised that Pickett. Got back there. He looks like he's cramping up a little bit. He's a run support guy, 
and you got Will Hastings matched up one-on-one -on -one with him. Sheen's up close to the line of scrimmage. Now he's back. He can't let him get behind him. He does get behind him, Passing and all he can do is grab onto Defense, him, or he gives up a huge 16. pass play. 15-yard penalty. Hastings automatic. already made one huge First play down. down a 33-yarder. That's, That's actually a pretty good football. Yeah, yeah. Official it's timeout. A, late in that first half, you're, you're about to get beat for a big one. That's the, the right thing to do, obviously, in the college game. It's in, in NFL, it's spot foul. In college, you're going to give up uh, 15 yards. Well, we've had this, this quarterback matchup, the experience, Justin Herbert, who passed up in the draft, come back, considered one of the best in the country. Bo Nix, one of the best prospects we've seen in recent years, a quarterback getting the start as a true freshman. The, the battle of Oregon's O-line, Auburn's D-line. It has been a wild, big play filled first half. Yeah, it's it's been exciting. And, and if you're an Auburn fan, you're thinking, can they get a field goal? Can, can they possibly score and get get a touchdown? If you're an Oregon fan, you're thinking, man, to make the trap to this trip, basically, you know, across halfway across the country, take on a very talented Auburn team. Pretty good first half for, for Oregon. They talked a lot about toughness and attitude and matching the intensity that Auburn can provide and that you have to go up against. And they've done that and for at least for a half. Both teams have left lots of points on the field. Oregon with the drop touchdown pass, the missed chip shot. Herbert with the fumble down here when they were threatening to go in. Bo Nix made a tough decision and could have had another interception here near the end of the uh, second quarter. So lots of twists and turns. And now you get a Auburn's got a couple timeouts. Minute 58. Uh, that was a mismatch in favor of Auburn there. They had it. We talked Pickett made the smart play by just grabbing on to Hastings. On first down, Nix drops back again with his peak and downfield. Now just tries to avoid the rush. Stay alive on the edge. Still looking to throw. It throws a wobbly ball into the turf trying to fight back to get it was Williams. You know, it's hard to take that out of your game when you're the number one ranked dual threat quarterback in the country coming out of high school football last year because you know what? Probably nine and a half out of ten times in high school, he makes that play. He's either able to run around, make a play, run around, take off, and run for 40. It, in college, he's going to learn that he's going to have to be kind of wise with how he scrambles and when he scrambles to keep plays alive. The other free play. Ducks jumped offside. Nix rolls, fires down the field, but over the head of Canella. And the offensive line for Robert again stayed put with offside. that free play. <laughs> Defense number 99. You think they train that Five a little bit? penalty replay. Second down. I, think, I got a feeling they drill that a little bit down at Auburn. Those linemen do not move. They don't flinch. So another penalty. Minute 42. A couple of timeouts. So, so Nix does as a young quarterback with time management. If they're able to get across midfield and start to think about field goal. Hastings in the slot to the right. Now he'll motion back. Whitlow is the tailback. Here comes pressure. It's picked up. Nix has time and launches downfield. Jump ball intercepted. Picked off by Javon Holland. And that's a second interception in Nix's debut. Just kind of threw this one up. Canella is out there who's got size at 6'5". And that's why, if you notice, the ball is up high in the air. But by throwing it high, he underthrew it. Holland's a pro. He's an NFL player that's a safety but can cover. That's why they'll leave him out there. They like that matchup. It's not like Pickett being back there. Look at his eyes. Locates the football, underthrown. So Nix trying to put it up just didn't give it enough to give the big tall receiver at 6'5 a chance to make a play. You're right. Holland was a stud as a true freshman. Five interceptions. One of the leaders in the Pac-12. So now six for his career. He's an athlete. Just a great looking player. Auburn only threw five picks all of last year. They get two in the first half of the opener. It's died. And he's going to squirt forward for Jeremiah Dinson knocked him down. See if uh, Oregon tries to press here, add to the lead. Minute 23 in Canada. They have one. They have a out. little urgency about them right now. Dish halftime report. Kevin Nagami, Mark Sanchez, going to Jonathan Vilma. Pass is broken up nicely over the middle. Getting a hand out there was Owen Popo, the true freshman linebacker. The true freshman. The crowd thought he might have been leaning 
on die knock him away from the ball and I think he may have gotten there a little early with the left arm but no call sets up this third down Ducks just two of seven tonight it's been a productive half for this offense but not on third down Kevin Steele dialed up some pressure the last third down this time he sits back nope they're coming Herbert delivers low and outside trying to get the ball to Josh Delgado where only he could make the play Davis in coverage and here comes the punch yeah, again nice job by Auburn Kevin Steele's made some adjustments doing a good job of getting to steel and even when they don't get to him I think they're affecting his rhythm that he had earlier in this game it's like Jake Hansen center one of those veteran offensive linemen down on one knee and the athletic trainers trotting out to take a look at him this season Taco Bell celebrating student sections and passionate fans like the Auburn student section awarding the best student section of the year go to ESPN.com slash Taco Bell to see if your team made this week's rankings and see how your school can compete so after this punt Auburn will have the football with a couple of timeouts perhaps about a minute to work with Nick's a couple of picks do you still try to take a, a downfield look with the young quarterback let's see let's see where the ball is after this return Tigers peel back to set it up and man mom booms it. this is a nice kick tight inside the 20 makes a move yeah point blockers point. gets the edge and it'll be knocked out of Oregon territory and the question is oh. itself and now flags on the tackle that was the punter Maimone who kind of body slam him. I mean you're one of the few guys I know that gets excited about the punters you know every week other than Pat McAfee <laughs> and this time he goes makes a big mistake late in the first half where he gets him in a in a headlock out of bounds he thinks of himself as an athlete he, he was a uh, high school okay. quarterback he's, he's down he's out of bounds okay we're done done he's gonna yeah he's gonna be a body slam all right that's 15 yards oh, easily 15 yards for a team after the play personal foul unnecessary roughness kicking team number 42 15 yard penalty added to the end of the run first time he's smiling but that that's a rarity, first of all, a punter with unnecessary roughness, but it's a crucial penalty. I don't know if he'll be smiling after Mario Cristobal gets a hold of him. Sunday night baseball in Philadelphia. Beat Alonzo and the Mets. Take on Bryce Harper and the Phillies. Both teams battling in that NL wildcard chase. Coverage begins at 7 Eastern on the ESPN app. Right after our U.S. Open coverage. They're building a new ballpark for the Rangers. Seems the other one was, was pretty I, I, new. When you when you pull up, it's beautiful. It looks it looks great, but does they're not quite there yet I'm guessing it'll be one of those retractable roofs try to protect yep. them from that heat that's the point yeah 53 yard punt but a 41 yard return tack on 15 at Auburn is set up at the 26 <laughs> play action immediate pressure and the ball is incomplete Booby Whitlow tried to fight back but the Ducks again got in the young QB's face well, they have Dialed up pressure on Bo Nix. It's been a problem for him. He's one of seven tonight facing the blitz. We can go back to the fact that Andy Avalos studied, did a good job of preparing, understands you can take advantage of having a young quarterback there and mixing those looks up and bringing the pressure at the right time to affect his, his confidence. They show pressure again. And bring it. And Nix is flush, eyes downfield, and he'll fire incomplete. Gets out of the end zone. Receiver had gone out of bounds anyway. Slade Mato Tia has begun to be a pass rush problem for Auburn. Yeah, the great thing about Bo Nix is he, he has the athletic ability when he is blitzed not to just have to wave the white flag and give up. He, he's an athletic kid that can get away from the pressure. He just doesn't have a lot of options of where to go with the ball after he after he starts to create five of 16 with those two interceptions third and ten as the Tigers try to cash in the pump return and the penalty they got pressure on him again Nix scrambling around can he escape yes he can and he's gonna get a first down and scoot out of bounds inside the 15. That's in large part why he's got the job. Here's Avalos showing blitz here at the snap. They drop, they bring the pressure here, right? Let's confuse the young kid. 
See him drop, they bring it from the, from the field, he steps up, and that's exactly what we were just talking about. The athletic ability to be able to keep the play alive, this time instead of throwing it, it shows he can pick up the first down with his legs. Yeah, got 13 and 3rd and 10. 31 seconds, they still have the timeouts. Still facing pressure. And he's gonna be dropped, sacks, for the first time tonight. Samson New got him, and that's the first time the young fellow has been sacked since his junior season in high school. Wasn't sacked all of last year. That's what I'm, I'm saying. He's used to being in a world where he's just can can do that, you know. And now you've got a guy like Simpson, Samson New. By the way, 206 pounds playing at linebacker. They say he doesn't have size, but he's got speed, and that's why he was able to bring him down. Speed, of course, is what they're recruiting hard to get, along with the big bodies in the middle. Seen improved athletic ability from this Oregon defense. It was a problem at times last year for sure. They have stepped up tonight when they've been backed up near their own goal line. They've forced Auburn to kick a couple of field goals. And Auburn beginning this series in the red zone now back to the 21 with a second and 18. And, and Gus Malzahn is trying to talk to his offensive staff and again thinking about what can we do for the kid. A couple times, he, you know, even on that last one. He's got to protect, got to trust his his backs and his linemen. When they blitz, I, they're going to pick him up. You've got to believe that they're going to pick him up. Sometimes he's getting out a little bit too early instead of just kind of comfortably sitting there and evaluating the play and letting it develop. He starts to take off and, and scramble. Of course, they're in easy field goal range. How risky will this play call be? Who makes one for his last seven with that pick. The question to me is who can win a, a matchup? Who, who can win? Oregon looks like they're playing more zone here. Yep. Well, now they bring pressure late. And the catch made, but hit behind the line is Seth Williams. The Ducks defense has been stout in their own end. Well, they sniffed that out. Saw it completely. Lenore does a good job of feeling that play out, reading it, and realizing right away, once he sees this, once he sees this guy's coming downfield, the defense is taught to take off, to expect a quick throw. That's exactly what six. Lenore does a good job of doing that time. Play never had a chance because of the quick reaction from the Oregon defense. Sound tackle, too. Yeah. So they take their final timeout, 19 seconds. And once again, you've seen really both offenses fail to cash in with scoring opportunities. Auburn was thinking six after the penalty tacked onto the long punt return. We'll have to settle for a field goal unless they can convert this third and 21. Phil Knight, of course, Nike's founder and Ducks number one donor, travels well. And Tim Cook is an Auburn grad, the CEO of Apple. He said they have a little friendly bet on this they game. They do. They sure do. A bottle of wine, was A little it? bottle of wine. Yeah, Larry Scott, Pac-12 commissioner. We got three commissioners here tonight. Greg Sankey's here. CC, of course, in the Big 12. Commissioner also here because they're, they're hosting this event. Bruce Pearl took the Tigers to the final four. See what Gus Malzahn will dial up here on third and 21. They don't want to take another loss. Here comes the pressure again. Nix lost for the end zone. Jump ball almost intercepted again. Going up was Lenore trying to get the ball to the big guy Williams, but it's fourth down. This is a good Oregon defense. I mean, we're going to look back at five, week five, week six, week seven. Look at his head. Look how you, you mentioned how how disciplined, how how fundamentally sound they look tonight. New defensive coordinator, big emphasis in the offseason of being better on this side of the ball. Loved how he got his eyes turned and located the ball. Carlson accounting for all the Tigers scoring so far. This from 42 to cut the lead to five before halftime. And it slides wide right. So Auburn comes up empty despite the superb field position and Oregon underdogs tonight will take an eight point lead to the break big punt return they had seven plays and got two yards before that missed field goal missed opportunities Carlson is ultra reliable inside of 50 yards a rare miss and you, you, we keep talking about red zone who's going to score I mean it's such a big thing coming in Auburn now three times inside the red zone no points or no and th they don't have a touchdown yeah just the two field goals interception and a missed field goal also in the red zone Oregon of course had missed opportunities as well the drop touchdown by Addison then they missed a chip shot field goal then the fumble by Herbert when they were 
threatening to really stretch the lead. So they'll take a knee. Not as productive a second quarter for the Ducks offense, but they have 203 yards in the first half. Herbert 10 of 16, 122, and a touchdown. Auburn gets the football to begin the second half. It is 14-6 Oregon. The halftime report coming up. Kevin Nagandi, Mark Sanchez, and Jonathan Milba coming up right after these messages. Tonight in Texas, week one's showcase showdown. We got the Tigers and the Ducks. It's going down on the 50-yard line. <laughs> we got all the making of a Saturday night. First half. We'll come back Saturday Night Football on ABC. Presented by Willis Fargo. Here in Arlington, Bo Nix makes his college debut in the true freshman. A couple of interceptions. He flashed the athletic ability, and now they'll get the football back. Kirk behind by eight. Interesting to see how Malzahn, who's calling the place tonight, remember, manages his offense. They have not been able to run it that well. Uh, he told us week one is about in-game adjustments. You think you might know what they, they are possibly capable of doing, and then they do it for half, and now you go back to the drawing board, and you see how you can put your young quarterback in a position to have success. And, you know, he, he's had some moments where he's played well, his creativity. They just have to find ways, I think, to really get his tempo going. When Gus Malzahn has, has this offense going, it's when usually it's tempo involved and a running quarterback involved. They're not gonna, is going to leave it right there. Take a look at the Pacific Life game summary. Now Justin Herbert comes in wanting to launch the kind of season that he hopes to be special after all the ups and downs. And he was 10 of 16, efficient throwing the ball. He had the touchdown pass here. He did have the fumble late in the half, though. Well, I, I thought the way that Oregon came out early, and they, they came in prepared, and they knew how they wanted to try to attack Auburn. The other thing that we really didn't talk about much this week was the other side of the ball, the all the uh, Oregon defense and, and how they were going to try to attack a true freshman quarterback. Give the first half to Andy Avalos, the new defensive coordinator coming over from Boise State. A lot of credit for the plan, at least for the first 30 minutes. Sugar huddle by the Tigers to start the second half. Let's see how much tempo they'll run after Nix was able to settle in for a half and a whistle before the first snap right of the, the half. Snap. Delay of game. Ouch. Offense. Five yard penalty. Oh boy. It's first down. Try to get cute with that huddle close to the line and trick the Ducks defense. Well, again, it's week one. I mean, we're, we're, we saw it a lot in week zero, you and I, with Miami. Oh, yes, we did. And even week one, we've had games on since Thursday night, and that's part of the things that coaches stay up at night late trying to figure out how to avoid in week one. The, the mental errors are what drive you crazy. It's not how they ideally wanted to start the second half getting the ball. Yep, behind the six, Shivers is behind the quarterback. He's got the football running to the right. Ducks string it out, jam it up for no gain. Maria? Well, Chris, Gus Malzahn told his team at halftime that that's the worst that they could possibly play in all three phases of the game. Now, as freshman quarterback, he told him to settle down and that the way that he plans on helping him is to establish the run early. He said Bo is still going to make big plays, so he just needs him to settle down and focus on making those when they come up. And, Maria, I think part of establishing the run includes the quarterback, the zone read, the quarterback power. Running that quarterback, I think, can really get them going. Malzahn gives him an F in all three phases in the first half. Kubi, nowhere to go. They're trying that right side, and the Ducks, I don't know if they've caught off or off guard. They are stout up front. They're not easy to move at all. Well, Faliu, 99, is having an incredible game for Oregon. Big defensive lineman, 6'3", 295 pounds here on his third down and long. We'll check out. But he has had his way disrupting this Auburn offense and trying to be able to get penetration. At 295, he's able to do that. Next two for his last nine. The completions were for negative yardage at the end of the half. This is a straight run. Looks up the field, and he just got tripped up as he was escaping the pocket. He'll get back near the original line of scrimmage, but it's a three and out. Lamar Winston made the tackle. I, I, for me, I'm watching this game for a half in another series. I don't think Oregon's secondary and Andy Avalos fears the passing game right now. I just think that they're thinking, you know what? Let's make Bo Nix beat us in throwing the football. And if he can do it as a freshman, so be it. We're taking everybody, and we're coming downhill, and we're taking this running game away, and let's make Nix beat us. There's Andy Avalos right there. 
Holland, who had the electric tightrope return down the far sideline in the first half, which eventually didn't produce points with the turnover. He's back at his own 30. And then from Melbourne, Sipos boots it away. It's a nice one. Going to drive him back to the 26. Tigers coverage team lets him escape again. Javon Holland, another nice return. He's out near midfield, and that's not going to make Malzahn feel any better about the special team. And a couple of the gunners just ran right by him. Let's go back to Justin Herbert. Remember we talked about pressure versus no pressure. Here early in this game, he's able to hit an over route to Johnny Johnson to set up the early touchdown for Oregon. And here one of the few times that he held onto the ball and Kevin Steele's defense actually got to him. So there haven't been many moments where he had just thrown the ball out quickly. You can see just two passes where he's felt pressure and the 14 passes where he's not had that pressure one of the things i would put an asterisk next to is oregon's done a good job of not holding on to the ball too long with herbert and getting the ball out quickly 21 yard return by holland who's having a night and also has a pick at safety sets up herbert who takes a downfield shot but breaking off the route there was the freshman delgado that, that just looks like a miscommunication there huh? Not real sure the freshman Delgado even saw the ball. Usually when you got a fourth year senior quarterback who started for four years and a true freshman playing his first game and there's a miscommunication, <laughs> you, from up here you tend to go with the quarterback. Well, you always do anyway. Oh, yeah. Herbert rolling, looking across, and delivers a dart, and it's a diving catch for a first down by Johnny Johnson, who's been dangerous tonight. This gives you an idea of the arm strength. We talked about how, how physically he is 6'6", 237. Watch this. Gets his body turned right at the last second, and on the run, able to throw that football on a line about 35 yards, and he throws it exactly where Johnny Johnson can make a play on it, not the defender. And now out of the backfield, Verdell in a misdirection, a hard hit. He'll get just a yard. Roger McCrary, one of his backup safeties, who's a big dude, laid the lumber there. Also, the guy that was about to lay the lumber was Marlon Davidson. <laughs> How about him? Big defensive end, 200 and about 80 pounds for Dell going out. Looked like maybe with a stinger on his left shoulder. Watch Davidson. It's a big defensive end. Chasing a really fast running back. Almost is able to catch up to him. Good to see that he's not limping. He was hampered in the first half. Play action, a low throw. Breland makes the catch. He's muscled out of bounds short of the marker. It'll be third down and four. Yeah, half of them on the tackle. And Bertel, such a big part of this offense. You can see that left arm up in the shoulder. Remember, it's an offense that's already without four or five receivers. Jawan Johnson, the Penn State grad transfer, was a late scratch tonight. On the run. Again, far side delivers a strike. And it's Spencer Webb. Big fella who went up and got a touchdown in the first half. He's got a first down. Yeah, he's starting to settle in as a young guy. Really well-designed play. Very simple concept. Little cross route where you had man-to-man. -man and you can use that outside receiver almost as a just a screen or cut off of him. And there's soft wow. coverage not able to take him. This Kirk. Another back is down. Just a play after C.J. Verdell goes out of the game. Travis Dye is having his it's leg cramp. looked at. Looks like a cramp on the right calf. It's indoors, which does sometimes lead to cramping. Opening game, prepare for it, train for it, run all those sprints, and then you, you hydrate for the last 48 hours. But I think we'll see some cramping in the second half, which is inevitable. This beautiful stadium, not a sellout, but uh, although we were told Auburn got a lot more tickets to the game than Oregon did, and Ducks fans are, are pretty well represented here. A good job traveling. Goodyear blimp zooming overhead, providing our aerial coverage. The best part of every kickoff is the drive that comes next. Go further with Goodyear, more driven. So it's a first down at the 22 yard line as he continues to try to work out Dye's right calf. You know, Herbert started the game 8 of 11 in the first half and then slowed in the second half. Didn't have as much success. Second quarter. Yeah, in the second quarter, just a 2 of 5. And I thought part of the reason was the adjustments that we saw from from Kevin Steele in the defense. He he got burnt early in the game by having cushions, a big soft cushion with his defensive backs. And Herbert was just getting the ball out quick, just saying, you're going to give me that? I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. And then Kevin Steele brought him up tighter, sort of take that away. And that's where I think the uh, where Herbert started to struggle. 
And Kevin Steele, a crafty one. Mario Cristobal, full of respect. Of course, Steele and Cristobal, staff mates at Alabama, so they knew all about each other, and familiarity was, was going to be a part of that matchup as Cristobal's offensive line goes up against Steele's defensive front. The job Steele's done in the three years, it's good to see die up. Like I said, I think he had a cramp. Three years that he's been there, in 16, he gave up 17 a game. Two years ago, 18 a game. Last year, 19 a game. Think of that. Yep. The era of spread and tempo. It's pretty good. Yeah, the year before he got there, Auburn was giving up 26 a game. That was 54th in the country. So now, with Die off the field, you see Verdell's shoulder being treated. As you see what we're talking about here, improvement in the Tigers' defense. But they've had their hands full tonight, head spinning at times. The first down. And Darren Felix, the sophomore number 22, is in the backfield. He's got the football. He may need to step up if the top two guys can't come back. It'll be second and nine. Felix from Fort Myers, Florida. Bucks, true freshman recruiting class, one of the top ten of the country. Cristobal backing it up. The, the early returns for the 2020 recruiting class. Very highly ranked as well. They sort of put a roster together in Eugene. Herbert steps up. Had to work hard to hold on to the football as big Derek Brown makes one of his impact plays. Uh, he, he ended up making it, but not after a pretty good job of pass protection by Dallas Warmack, who was working on him one on one. He did a nice job for plenty of time. It was just coverage downfield. Maybe the second or third time we've seen Herbert hold on to the ball and the defense aligned the beneficiary of just good coverage downfield. See if Steele gets exotic here on third and eight. And the last third down, there was a cushion. This time, see if they're, they're a little tighter this time in coverage. Got an inexperienced back in there. He steps up. Herbert delivers into traffic. And the catch is made by Johnson for a first and goal. You've seen the arm strength. How about the accuracy? Yeah, nice job of having patience, like he said. Look at this move right here. Boy, that's a, that's just an understanding between a quarterback and a wide receiver. It's like a bat, like playing basketball. He's just going to work. It's like an option route. Let me work off the defender. You throw it away from him. They're on the same page. In sync. First down on third down. Johnson's been the top guy tonight. Targeted five times. Made five catches. Felix tries to bounce it. Get the end zone. And he does. And the Ducks. Stretch the lead as the third team tailback makes a touchdown. First of his career. I'm surprised they lost the edge. Watch the corner go inside. The receiver doesn't block him, but he follows him in man coverage and doesn't get back outside. A little hesitation move by Felix. I think slowed down McQuarrie, the corner, and then he had the speed to go around him, but they lost the edge of the defense. Change in kicker now. Adam Stack, the junior from Honolulu, who did not start. Hampton Lewis missed the chip shot. Now the veteran knocks the PAT, and Oregon is up 21-6. Take this whole big circus to Louisville. See the Fighting Irish and the Cardinals over on ESPN. Labor Day night. Showcase game for Brian Kelly's preseason top 10 team at 8 o'clock Eastern time. Well, Oregon gets a three and out on defense. Another nice punt return. And a 53-yard, nine-play touchdown drive. Touchdown run around the edge by Darren Felix. And now... Bonex in this offense finds himself in a hole, Kirk, and a lot more urgency than there was even a few minutes ago. This is a big series coming up for Bonex. Hamden Lewis did not kick the PAT, but he's back to kick out duties, and it's another deep drive. Well, you knew there was going to be some bumps. This is a tough defense to debut against. It, it really is. They've done a good job with their creativity, mixing up different looks. And Bo Nix, I think, at times has had to feel like he's had to try to make things happen. And that's exactly what Oregon wants. They want to confuse his eyes, make him want to get out of the pocket before maybe he even needs to feel that pressure. But there has been a lot of pressure. And I think one of the things that Gus Malzahn said 
We need to be good around him. Well, I think right now the skill at receiver and running back needs to step their game up. We can't just put it all on a true freshman making his first start. Who's going to help? Big series. A lot of action in front. There's just nothing there. And as you said, they don't seem to be respecting the downfield passing. It's crowded at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, and here's a look at some of the true freshmen we've seen. Hank uh, Bachmeyer, I am a huge fan of that young man at Boise State. Jaden Daniels at Arizona State had a great start with a win. How about Sam Howe, the win that they had in Charlotte today? He's a true freshman. True freshman. Now, here's a <laughs> look, at <him>. look at <laughs> him. These guys enroll early, so. You know, they go through spring ball. It's a different game today than showing up in August. They're trying to find a high-handed tailback to have that deep rotation. This is Cam Martin back in his home state. Comes from Port Arthur. Plowing straight ahead. It's going to set up third down. Booby Whitlow has been contained. He's He's got just 32 yards on his 10 rushes. Cam Martin trying to see what he can do right now. Stove in motion. Martin has the handoff and he is hammered Good right effort. at the marker. Looks like it could be a first down. Got yeah, the 35. I'll move the stick. Yeah, he comes in with some fresh legs, does a good job with that leg drive to be able to pick up the first down. This is his third carry of the night. So like I said, he comes in with some power and some fresh legs. This is what, what Bo Nix is looking at is looking over at Gus Malzahn to get a feel for. A pretty complex offensive scheme is because you throw the tempo into it. And watch how quickly Chris Gus Molson works with Bo Nix. Bo Nix already looking. He's already communicating. He's getting formation personnel groups. And and when Auburn is really going, they they have tempo as an as an ally, as a friend, and they've not been able to really get that going. Tonight at all. They can't move the guys in front and Slade Mata to is coming downhill in a hurry. He made the play that time. Second and ten off the left side. Nothing doing. Flying in is Holland, who's having a monster game. Like, like, all phases. I, like I said, I mean you're looking, Gus on trying to call plays, and this defense doesn't fear the passing game. Not just Bo Nix. They don't feel the fear fear these receivers. They are so good at corner. Right now, they're going to say, until you make us pay for it, we're going to attack this running game and this freshman quarterback until you make us get out of it. Till then, good luck. Two by two look on third and nine. Ducks don't bring the blitz. Knicks has time and delivers a long throw incomplete. Auburn bench crying for a flag on Graham. Eli Stove, the receiver. But here comes the punt team again. Ball hit the ground by the time there was contact there by Graham. Good no call. Uh, and, and how about that throw, by the way, on third down and long for a young freshman? Left hash, throwing that all the way to the right sideline on third down. So even when he has time to make a throw, they're making him make the tough throw on third down. Zippos may consider punting this one in the seats. They have not been able to get down and cover Javon Holland, who's back deep. Two huge returns. It's another punt that's going to be returnable. And he's going to make a last second fair catch. And he got bumped after the fair catch. No flag. And the Ducks back to work from their 20 midway third quarter. Saturday Night Football, presented by Wells Fargo on ABC, is brought to you by Audi and American Express. Don't do business without it. Don't live life without it. It's supposed to be a shootout. Remember, two high-scoring offenses. Touchdowns were hard to come by in that championship game. Bo Nix actually watched that game as Cam Newton and the Tigers took down the Ducks. Now he is the man trying to lead Auburn to a comeback. But first, this, this defense has to get a stop getting the football back. Growing up around this program, again, his dad, quarterback in the 90s, his high school coach, Herbert, bust and throws the ball away. It is finally 
ruled incomplete. There was no whistle for a while. Britt and McLean pressured him. Yeah, they came from the left out here. Kind of a little bit of a delay. They both come right from behind each other. Actually, Britt comes in from the middle. He's the one that's able to get around the back. They're talking about whether yeah, it's going to be exactly, intentional ground. Exactly right. I, it was contact. I, I, can't, I couldn't tell. Now flags down. The cornerback. The cornerback while in the pocket and under duress they get threw the ball where there was no receiver. Therefore, intentional grounding. Offense number 10. Loss of down at the spot of the foul. It's second down. I think 33 <laughs> feels that he was right there. Chris, you got ahead with uh, Cyrus. Habib Likio? Yeah. yeah. He, he, was, he felt that he was there. I mean, Herbert's just trying to get rid of the ball. But he's, he is pretty close. If they'd thrown it a little bit just in the at his feet, it'd right, be okay. Right. So second. I, I, I think it was the 20. desperation of it maybe that got the attention of the official. Bibi Likio is still in the game, and he's got the football. And he's more of a power back than a speed back. He's able to get back about four yards. Yeah, Habib, very, very long. Bibi Likio, different kind of back than Die and Bertel. Again, it's KJ Brett. One of those new linebackers has played well tonight. Yeah, he's got great speed. I think Oregon has to be careful their play calling. Backed up deep in their own territory. Third down and long. Third 16, up 21 to 6. Six Tigers. minutes to go in the third. Yeah, Tigers are thinking takeaway right here. They rush four. Herbert has time. Steps up. Pump fakes. Long way to go to the marker. And he'll be dropped down way short by Britt. And they'll punt from the 21. So the intentional grounding penalty really stalls the drive before it gets going. Uh, he started the pump fake to Johnny Johnson on a on a crossing route. He actually, if he threw it, he had it for a first down. But the defense did a good job of forcing him out of the pocket. Maimon's punted well tonight. All three have gone for 50 plus. The Tigers have not really come after him. They've been a very good punt block team over the years. Block three last year. And they peel back. And it's a low boot. Tut on the sidelines. They'll be knocked out. Auburn will get nice field position. 531 in the third quarter. The lead Oregon is still 15. Here's the harbor that he wants. Playoff championship trophy presented by Dr. Pepper. Pac-12, by the way, it's a 15-year drought of national championships. That's the longest of any Power 5 conference. They have just the one playoff win. And that was, of course, by the Ducks, the first that ever played against Florida State. Folks who won the trophy a year ago in two of the last three years, the Clemson Tigers against Texas A&M. And then in prime time on ABC, LSU, and Texas in Austin. Maybe Professor Matthew McConaughey will pay a visit to you guys down there. He's teaching a class. I see. saw I saw. All right, a little more urgency with every possession for Auburn. Once again, the Ducks are just crowding the line. I mean, it is just going to be difficult to do anything unless they can stretch the field, Kirk. Yeah, and, it, you know, one thing Gus Malzahn is doing a very good job of is he's got a true freshman quarterback, and he's doing a good job of teaching, just getting him on the sideline. Every series is a teachable moment within this offense and the defense that he's seeing. And uh, I think but Gus showing very good patience. Second down carry for Whitlow, who is very patient himself and makes it oh. something out of nothing. It's a first down in Oregon territory. Boy, what an effort here. He was actually down and he just did not stop. Watch this. I mean, he runs this off to the right. It looks like he's down right there. Instead, kind of pushes off, looks back to the left, finds a little bit of a crease, and all of that is able to get the first down. Booby's the guy that scored the game-winning touchdown the last seven minutes of last year's opener against Washington. Now around the edge, it's Stowe has a blocker in the clear. Eli Stowe down the sideline, a sprint that he's knocked out inside the 10, and the Tigers are threatening again. See, there, there, there's Auburn. First down, sugar huddle, get the ball in the perimeter with a jet sweep. Got a couple linemen around there to be able to pick up a nice block. Nye, the big tight end at 270 pounds. Good job of leading it and getting the ball on the perimeter. Out on the edge. There it is again. Confusion on the edge. Ducks, and it's a touchdown to Stowe. They were not lined up, and they were not ready. 
And Auburn finally finds the end zone. Chris, Chris you're dead on. There are guys running on the field. There's guys running off the field. They're, they're, the, the tempo finally caught them. We keep waiting for it. When was it going to come? And they put together a drive where they get that typical Gus Malls on offense rolling. And Oregon, for the first time all night, had their head spinning a little bit and sitting back on their heels. And Nix with the first touchdown pass of his career. 58-yard drive in four plays. Desperately needed, and they did it quickly to cut into the lead. It's now eight. Well, look at the chaos here. You, you've got Auburn lining up. They're ready to go. Look at look at Dive running off. Well, they don't see the receiver. He's up here by himself, and then late. You see the late adjustment by Thomas Graham, who finally looked out there and saw him. And how about the awareness by Bo Nix? He just aborted the play, threw it out there. Great heads-up play by the freshman quarterback to quickly get the ball snapped and throw it to give Stove a chance to make a play on the football. Graham is usually a very short tackler, but again, the confusion. And finally says, Gus says, boom, that's Auburn football. That's Auburn. That, that's, that's Gus Malls on and Auburn right there. And they score so quickly, they feel they're never really out of a game. Four plays, 58 yards, one minute and 11 seconds off the clock, and got it to 21 to 13. That was Eli Stove's drive, the 36-yard run, then his first career touchdown reception. He made it some impact plays in 2017, and again, ripped up his knee in ACL last spring. So that is sweet for him to finally work his way back. Those long days in rehab. You can have some very dark times as a speed guy. Yep. Better recover from ACL, but he's back and contributing. And we were waiting to see who was going to step up to take some of the pressure off of Bo Nix. And on that series, Chris, it was Eli Stowe. Auburn faithful finally in reason to stand up and make noise. And now for Oregon, suddenly it's a one-score game, but things don't seem so secure. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear from end zone to end zone. Goodyear more driven. Now the last few series, Auburn has played very, very good defense. And usually when you see a team that's trailing and their offense finally finds a spark, that has a way of, of pumping up your defense that much more because they want to get the ball back now to Bo Nix in that offense. See if they play with even another extra gear here. C.J. Burdell, who was having the trainers look at his shoulder earlier, is back in the football game. That's good news for Ducks fans. They fake it to him on a slant. It's Johnson who's been a reliable target, and he'll pick up about five on first down. Yeah, that, that, that's kind of been the, the, the plan of attack for Oregon. They, they see the soft coverage, and they come off with a little play fake and get it out as quickly as they can to their receivers. Now that the cushion taken away at the bottom, at the top, and there's still a little bit of a cushion there in the slot at the top. Ducks using some tempo. Another throw across the middle. That's an accurate throw. And Josh Delgado makes the catch, and a flag comes in late. Well, they, they threw it right at Davis, where the catch was made. Signaling pass interference. But is it against the offense? I think he grabbed a hold of him when he's running running his route. I don't think it's on the offense at all. Still trying to figure things out over here. The play move the ball to the 39 for a first down. Matter if you, you take the penalty. Pass interference. Defense number play. 13. The penalty is declined. Result of the play. First down. Yeah, he got there. Davis watch him grab on with his left arm. Trying to make the play with his right arm. With the left arm or the left hand is grabbing on to the receiver. Delgado's first career catch. Freshman out of Carson. See a real good look of it there. Herbert, some high percentage throws, but he's made his last seven. Fake to Verdell, flip it out. Another easy pitch and catch to Breeland. The short gain on first down. Coming up to make the play was Vincent. Yeah. It's almost as if Kevin Steele and the defensive coordinator is saying, listen, on early downs, we'll, we'll give up, we'll give that up. We're, we're gonna be short tacklers. We're gonna make sure there isn't a lot of yards after the catch. Try to get Herbert into third down. Crowding the line on second and seven. Here comes the blitz. They get it out quickly for down a terrific tackle in space by Christian Tutt. 
knocks him down. But they went with a tight formation just to get him out there one-on-one -on -one against Tut to be able to make the play. You trust Verdell to get out there and be able to win this battle. How about that, Chris, in space? And third down, they're playing quickly, and the fingertip catch is made by Spencer Webb, but he is not going to have first down yard. It's going to be fourth down, a yard short. Tut made that play. Tut does a good job of getting around the receiver that was lined up to his outside. Watch him work around and then close. Very good job of not getting screened or picked because of the vision and the awareness to expect that quick throw. Is Cristobal going to gamble in his end? Up eight on fourth and one. Uh, he's going to try to draw them off, right? You'd think this is a serious gamble if they run a play. Are you kidding? Trying to draw them off. Yeah. That's what you'd expect. I mean, your defense, it, for the yeah. most part, has been playing pretty well. And you also have all seniors on the Auburn defensive line. I don't think they're going to go for the old fourth and one in your own territory with an eight-point lead. We're going to go for it. Yeah, no, they, they weren't buying that. <laughs> And so they just got Oregon just kind of conceded. Okay, we'll spend the time out and we'll we'll punt it away. So lots of twists and turns, lots of momentum changes, lots of missed opportunities for both offenses and defenses stepping up when they need to. And this is a, this is setting up as a really nice last 15, 16 minutes. It's everything you hope for. You, you know, get to week one and you're doing all your homework. You're thinking, man, this looks like we have, may have a very competitive game. Got a great matchup with Herbert against this Auburn defense. Can't wait to see Bo Nix have a chance to, to go up against Oregon's defense with a new defense coordinator. It's played out pretty well. I think we're going to have a one-possession game going into the fourth quarter, all you could hope for. Oregon's punter has had a terrific night. Ramon has boomed some deep ones. Now we'll try to pin Auburn back near the goal line. Tut standing at his 10. Very high, but is it too far? I mean, it's just going to land deep in the end zone. That's exactly what you don't want to do. This week's college football rankings brought to you by Chick fil A. This is the AP poll. We'll see Oklahoma and Jalen Hurts debut tomorrow against Houston. Ohio State, I don't know if their fans are totally satisfied with the win over Florida Atlantic. Not completely convincing. Michigan finally pulling away now from Middle Tennessee. Yeah, we see Notre Dame. You and I will be calling that game in Louisville. Looking forward to that on Monday night. Texas off to a big lead early against Texas or Louisiana Tech. The, 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 the momentum and the energy inside the stadium feels different. After the touchdown, defense forced another punt. Auburn a big opportunity here under two minutes to go in the third quarter. Whitlow makes his way. Say the Auburn offense would be satisfied with their production. He's still fighting hard for yards on first down. Maria? Yeah, Chris, to add on to Herbie's point, even the defense on the sideline, they've been very gassed over the last two series. And they've come over, and for the first time, I'm seeing them request an oxygen mask. And a couple of guys, including Bryson Young, has had to receive a little bit of attention, some extra hydration, because they're starting to feel it in this game. Maria, it's getting a little chippy down there, too. Second and two. And it's Whitlow again. Hammered, knocked down. It'll be a first down across the 30, though. We'll see if Auburn. Yeah, there's more chip yeah, right there. And yeah, we got a little, got a little talking back and forth. The game's starting to get pretty competitive here. Game's on the line late. It's the best offensive line surge that we've seen in the last two possessions for the Auburn offense. The play calling, and I think the tempo, and I think attacking Oregon has really help this offensive line be able to get better blocking angles up front Whitlow works his way through heavy traffic and they're just staying way ahead of the count that's another seven yard gain on first down yeah Winogo Harrell Kim Horton and Driscoll those five senior starters up front for Auburn yeah and, uh, blocking angles in this offense so important and if guys are going to slant an angle one way the back has to be patient and allow the offensive line to figure that out and then navigate his way through and that's right now what we're seeing from Whitlow that was a nice end. this time they, they clawed the middle they were able to penetrate just to kind of mess up the timing of the play there. 
Oh, but Jordan Scott, we've not talked much about, but he is a low. That time he was the one able to get in there, affect the play. Leader, 25 pounder. End of three. The lead is eight. Back after this message and a word from your local ABC station. Teams trade a touchdown to the third quarter. We begin the final period. Auburn trying to extend the drive with a third and two. Ducks up by eight. It's an enormous fourth quarter for both teams. I think particularly, though, for Oregon, Kirk. Oh, yeah. And we'll talk about that as their defense tries to get a stop. Whitlow is the back. They fake it to him on the end around. Ducks are ready for the dead sweep that time. And it's a tackle for loss. Funa, the freshman, stays home on a third down play. How about that? We've been talking about true freshmen and skill positions. That time, back here on the back side, he does exactly what he's expected to do. You never know with Auburn. They've been having success between the tackles with the patience of Whitlow. They fake that. They come back the other way. And there's the freshman on the outside waiting for him. Great play. On cue, Kirk, the defense makes a needed play. It's a program trying to get their swagger back on a national level. The bubble burst after the 2016 season. Fair catch signaled. You know, three different coaches in the last three years. They get rare chances to take their cuts at a big team out of conference. Now they have the lead entering the fourth quarter. All-State bus with Curtis piloting it here in Arlington. Mayhem on opening Saturday. What's your mayhem moment? Boy, I, I thought it might be Boise State and Florida State, but the mayhem moment is Georgia State. They were 2-10 and ten last year in the Sun Belt, taking on Tennessee and about them going into Knoxville. Sean Elliott able to get a win 38 to 30. They were driving the ball nine plays, 10 plays. They were 26 point underdog. Great win there. Congratulations, Georgia State. Now the Ducks get the football back. The offense has been stymied lately by Kevin Steele's defense. And it's a first down run. And Verdell knifes forward for just about three. You know, considering the way he came off about two or three series where he was he was noticeably in a lot of pain, looked like in his left shoulder, he has come back from that looking as if he's unfazed, still running hard. He's the bell cow. He's the he's the guy despite his his size at 5'9, 210. He's got to carry the load. He's the go-to man for the ducks in the backfield. Maria reporting how gassed the Oregon defense looked lately. Offense could use a little march here. Take some pressure off the defense, but right away with the incompletion, it's going to be third and long. Webb, the intended target. You know, with Schooler and the freshman, Micah Pittman out, Cam McCormick out. They've had to rely on players like Johnny Johnson and Jalen Red and Jacob Breland, the tight end, Juan Johnson out. Who's going to step up here on his third down for Herbert? Will they come after Herbert? It's a third down run and hard hit short of the first down. Downhill came K.J. Britt. And that Auburn defense is fired up. Yeah, they, they're definitely playing with some confidence right now. A little bit surprised by the play call on third down and long. They decide to... Just run the ball, go conservative, and K.J. Britt, Chris, as you said, coming in there. And what a great inside linebacker, kind of your typical Mike linebacker playing in between the tackles. Pretty physical. Three plays, Kurt, takes just 45 seconds off the clock. And that Ducks defense, which talked about fatigue, maybe setting in right back on the field trying to protect this lead. And Moen had a tremendous night punting. That is another long driving pick, not that high. But the coverage is excellent. Can they tackle him, though? Finally, at the 31-yard line. So 12.44 to play. Auburn chipping away. Back to work down eight. In the Pacific Life game summary, this quarterback comparison, you got a veteran and a rookie. Herbert, made one of the top quarterbacks in the country, passing the draft to come back. He's been efficient throwing, does have a fumble. You do have a born duck and a born tiger. Justin from right there in Eugene, Bo Nix with the TP that symbolizes a big Auburn victory through the years. Gets the football back, down eight. 
We feed Whitlow again on first down, who tries to spin, and this time he's going to be swarmed and eventually tackled by a whole bunch of white jerseys for a loss. Lamar Winston got there quick. He sure did. He did a good job of holding on at the edge of this defense and allowed the rest of the defense to rally. He's up here. Watch him keep his outside arm free right there. You see that? Now it allows the rest of this defense to get there. And he had a great effort to get back up. It's also saw the corner Thomas Graham helping out. Nick's three for his last 12 for just seven yards. Does have the touchdown pass. Hasn't yet completed a pass on third down tonight. And they make it third and reasonable from the pocket. Lost it. Nice pitch and catch. It's Canella out near midfield. Well, they, they lost him again. We saw a wheel route earlier. This time he's right here. He's going to work his way down and watch out die. Kind of half-heartedly looks like he might. Now he recognizes it late, turns the run to get him, and he's too late. Whitlow bangs for a short game. Canella, a guy who's a converted tight end, rarely targeted, but they're looking for options tonight. Guys who can get a matchup. Yeah, let's remember, Gus Malzahn has not, not called the plays for the last three or four years. He's back to calling plays, saving a few wrinkles for this last quarter and showing some things he really hasn't shown much of. Did a good job that time of hiding Canella, the big 6'5 senior, until he went out on the wheel route. It's Monogo, the excellent left tackle, the senior. From Nigeria, I believe, is the player on the Oregon sideline. I mean, Stove, the receiver. I saw him limping too. Touchdown. He limped off as well. Hate Wear and that. tear bound to be a factor in the fourth quarter of an opening game, especially a game played at this intensity, this speed. Nogo, a guy, it's a tremendous story. He came from Nigeria to play high school basketball and earn a scholarship in that sport. Went out and said, you know, this football stuff, let me, I'm going to put my Air Jordans out and go try to play some football. The talent was obvious. When he came over, he lived with high school basketball coach and his wife and grew into a pretty darn good left tackle. Good to see the trainer on the right nodding his head to the coaches. He's going to be all right. He's going to be all right. Hopefully he'll just be out for a play or two and get back out there. They desperately need his leadership and talent this late in the game, down eight. So here's Bo Nix. Rough stats in some respects. He's made some mistakes, but he is a winner. And he's got a chance to march the Tigers to perhaps a tie ball game if they can reach the end zone and get a two point conversion. Whitlow breaks free. High stepping his way into the red zone. Well, watch Driscoll right here, the right tackle. Seal, tight end, does a kick out, and they open a nice hole this time for Whitlock. Patience, vision, bounces it to the right, and picks up big yards. They fake it to him on first down with Tempo, and the catch is made by Matthew Hill, bounced off one tackle, and then dragged down after a very short game. Oregon defense really has to dig in now. He said they were gassed, and the Auburn Tempo got him in the red zone last time. And slow things are down a little bit right here in second and nine. Booby bangs ahead down inside the 10. He's near the marker. Will be spotted just short for a third down. Boy, he is running with such confidence. Caleb Kim, the center, nice job of getting a push there. And these linemen now are starting to consistently get up to the second level to the linebackers who in early in this game were fighting downhill. And right now, they're not quite as sure as, or as confident that's letting those linemen get up to that second level and pick up some big blocks. Platoon subs for Oregon. They run in about four fresh bodies. Over the back on third and short. Actually, he's the Wildcat quarterback trying to get the edge. And he'll be knocked down short of the goal line by Graham, but it's first and goal. But I, I tell you, the more I'm watching him tonight, the more I'm really starting to fall in love with his running style. Oh, man, hate to see him go down. He has had such a great second half. He, he was trying to extend himself away from Graham, trying to get to the pylon, and it was Graham four locked up on his, his feet as he tried to get to that end zone. The progressive pylon cam giving you a look. So Whitlow being looked at, the football will be spotted down at the one.
Saturday Night Football on ABC is presented by Wells Fargo. This is a commitment to better banking. This is Wells Fargo. And in part by Pacific Life, 150 years strong. Protection and retirement solutions for your future. Whitlow kind of slowly trudged to the sidelines, his arm around one of the athletic trainers. That last run took him over 100 yards for the fourth time in his career. He tried to come out the previous plays. He just tuckered out, I think. Yeah, he needs to get some oxygen and catch his breath. Joey Gatewood, the redshirt freshman, had minimal mop-up duty last year. He's a big, strong dude, 233, six foot five, in a quarterback now. Great runner. Offensive linemen are lined up in the backfield. This is just a dive for the end zone. Did he get there? Yes! And the Tigers get within two. It's a nice job for Joey Gatewood. Comes in, 6'5", we're down at the one-yard line. Try to extend yourself over the goal line. One play. Break the plane. Yep. Touchdown for Auburn. You hold the ball out like that, you better break the plane first. He's a guy with 4'5 speed, but also long arms, powerful body and shoulder injury. A lot of last year kept him from being a mop up more frequently and now the Tigers yeah, going down 21 6 just about 10 minutes ago on the clock. Gus Malzahn is out on the field. He's out to the numbers. Him and a couple coaches. The play clock. He, Gus Malzahn trying to get it reset which they've done. Two point conversion for the tie. Nick's back at quarterback. Shivers is the back. And was there a flinch up front? One no go. The left tackle. Let's see if that changes the thinking or if he's still going to try to go for the two point conversion out here. From the eight, he is steaming. It's a 69 yard okay. drive in eight plays, less and than three minutes. And instead of a potential game tying two point conversion, they're going to send out the kicker. He's frustrated with those linemen. Auburn, by the way, trying to convert a PAT for the 276th consecutive time. They're chasing the FBS record held by Florida State. It's a high snap and a good job getting it down by Sage Ledbetter, the holder. And Auburn back within one, 9.48 to play. They have momentum. They're going to go for two in the tie. Gus is a little steamy. Who was that and on the false start? He got his answer, Kirk. Well, well Nogo had to say, uh, me. <laughs> Here's the thing. He knows he blew an opportunity, or the group blew yep. an opportunity. Chance to go for two, the tie. He did no hesitation. He knew exactly the play that he wanted. Ball on the left hash, trips to the right. Knew exactly, and then they jump. And instead of potentially having it 21 21 they have to settle for the extra point and that's why he was somewhat animated there with the offense alignment. Good news for the Tigers their defense has been stout Oregon held to four first downs in the second half and now Justin Herbert minus all those talented receivers is going to have to find a way Kirk to make some plays occupy some clock add points if he can but rest that defense. But next Saturday, college game day at Bill Bob the Home Depot heading to Austin, Texas. To set up the Bayou Bengals and the Longhorns. So always a, a fun place to be, Austin, Texas. Yeah, be a great time. Make sure you focus on the job at hand and not on the festivities out and about, because you can do yeah. that. Yeah. Well, one can do that, I should say. I guess I get I guess he, a, a, a certain individual could do that, I guess. <laughs> We've got a great We've couple. had some times in Austin over yeah, the years. It's been awesome. Great doubleheader on ABC with Clemson and AM, 3.30, leading to that game primetime next week. Verdell is the back. This is a really urgent situation. Herbert had three receivers bunched to the right, and he flips it short to Jalen Red. There's not much after the catch these days. Dinson was there for the stop. Yeah, they're flying around right now, doing a very good job of taking away any potential yards that Red or any of the receivers that were coming up with in the first half. You got four on first down. Playing a little more downhill as a defense. They're not backing off on the tempo. Gets out quickly. Red again in space, and they will make a first down out near the 40. Well, that time he had some people out in front of him. Sewell, the left tackle, got out there. The tight end, Breeland. Again, ball out quickly. 
soft coverage allowed him to be able to have some space. And then with those two linemen out in front, nice job. That's one way to get yards after the catch. Have a couple of the big guys out front. And there's some movement along the line. Jake Hansen, the center. Offense, number 75. Five-yard penalty. It's first down. And they said 75. It's Dallas Warmack, the Alabama transfer, brother of Chance. Yeah, there's a slight flinch. Yeah. Hansen snapped the ball quickly and turned to his left, and nobody really moved. Or a crystal ball and his staff in it. Interesting position calling plays. They've come out pretty aggressive, getting the ball out quickly. Remember the one point lead. You don't want to get too conservative. You also don't want to turn the ball over. And here's a throw to Rat. Gets a block in space. And they will chase him down. He's tackled out near the marker at the 46. So a nice gain on first and 15. And 30 has been busy out there. And Dallas Warmack out down with an entry. This play was really well designed here, Chris. They show screen to the left. In fact, you have linemen. Watch the left side of the offensive lineman showing that they're going to go to a screen to the left. Back goes that way. You get the defense all going over here, and then you end up coming back the other way. Well designed play to hit that crease in the Auburn defense. They're looking at Warmack. We'll take a timeout. 8.16 to play. Second and one. All three plays on this drive. Receptions by Jalen Red. And try to run it for a first down. Burdell, boy, he has just taken some shots tonight, but he only knows one way straight ahead downhill, huh? He runs downhill, yeah. Second and short. Not much room for him to work through. You know who he ran through? Derek Brown. <laughs> Derek Brown. The top interior defensive lineman and one of the top in the entire country. He got off of his the lineman and he was there, but Burdell was coming at him so quickly and so low he couldn't bring him down. A, dude, he's 5'9, 210. He is just running with no fear in among the big boys. They fake it to him. Herbert now will tuck it and he'll have to scramble back. No gain. Nick Coe, we've not called his name a lot, the versatile defensive lineman who moves all over the place. Yeah, he, he is a, one of the better pass rushers you'll see in, in the SEC. Coe got the, uh, the, the sack or got the pressure, but Christian Tut made the play in coverage. Once again, Auburn in coverage, forcing Herbert to hold on to the football and then allowing the defensive lineman, in this case, Coe, to get home. In second and ten, Burdell looks over the middle. And again, they target an underneath receiver, Johnny Johnson, sure-handed. Davis tackles him. It'll be third and five now with the 45. With Oregon, they're just trying to eat clock, try to move the ball. At the very least, they're flipping the field here. If they're not able to get this first down, they're able to try to pin Auburn back. See if they use a lot of the play clock. They can take it down about 6.20. Get a first down, it would be huge for their cause. Short throw, catch made. Freeland knocked out. It will be near the marker. Jamie and Sherwood made a nice play. I'm going to put the ball right down at the 40 as Herbert took a shot to the knee and is still on the field. The spot is crucial here. They're marking it fourth down, Kirk, but the quarterback, bigger concern at the moment. Here's what happened. Popo, the, the throw. The freshman linebacker looked like knee to knee. And it wasn't necessarily a late hit. I think running towards him, I think their knee, both their knees collided. Well, that would be good news at least. It's painful. You get yeah. the kneecap to kneecap, but may not have created a serious problem. Get a decision now for Cristobal. Well, that was a, you're going to take a look here at the this is the line to make cam. Where is the football? Oh, no, no, he did short. not make it. That is short. That is a great view, by the way. Camera pays the price. It gives us the nice shot. 
So what do you think? I mean, it's been power football. Cristobal has leaned on his offensive line, but the Auburn defense has come up big here. They need about a football length. It's, it, I have to go back to Mario Cristobal, what he's tried to instill since he's been named head coach. A certain toughness, 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 toughness. It's all he's talked about and trying to bring that back what Chip Kelly really started has faded away when he was gone but trying to bring that back so I would say you go if it's fourth and a half a yard you're up one go for it does it make a difference if Herbert has to come out of the game Tyler Shuck is the registered freshman he played a few games as a mop up quarterback last year was able to preserve the redshirt season have to look at the, the knee to knee contact yeah just it's that right in right knee it, that's one of those that, that hurts I mean that, that's not necessarily one of those that you're concerned about him and being able to play again it's it's more of just enduring the pain does it influence the play decision here though do you put in a, I, a quarterback with no experience absolutely I mean if your entire message of your program is win win attitude toughness I mean and here the games on the line it's fourth and a half a yard You've got number seven back there who's had a great night. You've got an offensive line that's had some confidence, being able to win at the line of scrimmage. I think you go completely against your entire philosophy as a program if you didn't go for this. Herbert actually wanted to come back in the game. He's going to have to sit the play out, not allowed to come back in because they attended to him. So it is shut. Assuming they do run the play, trying to move it about a foot. And prolong the drive and get closer to the Auburn goal line and choose some more clock. And Mario Cristobal can give a pep talk to the offensive line as well as anybody on the planet. Play clock's at eight. They're gonna definitely going to call a timeout. Time out. Yeah, they're going to have to spend a timeout here. He's right next to the official. They'll take it all the way down, burn as much clock as they can. You do not want to rush this play. No. With a brand new quarterback <laughs> in no. there. No, but I love it Kirk that we talked about and the entire country has been talking about the Oregon offensive line and those 153 combined starts. That's the most in FBS in eight years against this Auburn defensive front with their NFL prospects and it has so often come down to that and here it is again. And here it is with the base plan. You don't want to say the complete game on a line but a pivotal point with 534 to go fourth and a half yard. Oregon's won their battles tonight in, in that matchup. Auburn has won some battles here in the second half. And I, I, I just think he doesn't have much of a choice here. He has to go for this, even with his starting quarterback uh, taking a playoff here. Knockdown, drag out. No, Herbert is actually told his team. At, yeah, the timeout, Herbert's allowed to come back into the game. No, that's true. He can come back in, so excellent use of a timeout. And now you've got the experienced quarterback in there. Oh, or is he? Oh, no. Officials are saying. Let's talk to Dave Katara, rules expert, because Oregon thought by taking the timeout they could bring him in, Dave. No, they cannot. On an injury, there has to be a play in between. Okay, even with On the timeout. You cannot buy a player back in. That's the rule. Okay. You can buy a player back in in a timeout if he loses his helmet, but not for an injury. So it, 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 they thought, they assumed that they could get him back out there, but now they had to call another timeout. <laughs> it's a big play. It's a big play. It certainly is. Well, all right, this is Chuck. Chuck's building. All right, Chuck. What do you call? Where's seven lined up? So I don't, that's all I want to know. But I want, I'm going to trust my off my left side of my offensive line. No, nope, you can't go. Justin said what? You, you ask me what I would do. I'd go to the left side of the offensive line, challenge them, tell them you're seniors. This is what it's all about. I'd hand it off to number seven and see if it's good against good and if it's good enough. Left side. He lines up deep behind Shuck. He's got it. He gets oh. everything. Slam down. A tackle for loss. The Tigers make a stand to get the football back. Truesdale and McLean. So I, I thought they'd run left because that's the strength. Guess who else thought they might run left? Kevin Steele. They slanted into the boundary. They slant this way towards that left side. Take away any cutback angle at all. So 
understand the call. It's the right call by Oregon, especially with your starting quarterback out. You go to the good, you go to the left side, you go to your back, but Kevin Steele, one step ahead, slant and angles back that way, and takes the back away. Good call by Kevin Steele in the defense. It was a very obvious call. Sure was. Well, tried to go strength on strength and lost that battle. Now, Tigers take over, down one, five and a half to play. Whitlow has gotten the breather, and he's back in. And he's got the football. And he is pounded at the line of scrimmage, just knocked backward. Austin Faliu. Yep. Also, we saw the veteran Winston get in there, pushing them back. Mm. His patience has helped him. But on that one, it slowed him down enough for Oregon to get after him. Remember, if you've just tuned into this game, Bo Nix. A kid that grew up watching his dad, or not watching his dad, watching Cam Newton, dreaming of playing for Auburn as a true freshman. How about this for his first game? Will he have to make a play with his arm? Second and ten. It's play action. Steps up. Scrambling around. Just running out of room and time and launches it into the bench. He had to have the big eyes there. Javon Holland came on the blitz and pressured him third and long. But they took the wheel route away. Canella, 80. They've hit that a few times. This time, it's covered. Here he is. They slide him down, but look at Dye right there where he needs to be. Sees him the entire time. Uh-uh. You're not getting me this time. Good coverage. He had no nothing to do but try to buy some time and get out of away from trouble. Now, can the debutant make a play on third and ten? Straight back. Picked up the pressure, fired high and over the head of Seth Williams. They heated up the pocket just enough, fourth and ten. Did a good job again, showing blitz from the left. Ends it up, ends up after the snap, coming from the right. Made him unsettled, uncomfortable. Could have very easily waited and kind of given that play a little bit more of a chance, but because of the way those white jerseys are flashing in front of his face, he got uncomfortable, started to panic, and had to get out of there and throws it away. You know why it hasn't been done at Auburn since 46? His making your debut in an opener as a true freshman quarterback at this level is really, really difficult. And really? we're seeing that. This kid is as talented a freshman as you could possibly have. It came like this. Yeah. Really hard. And a fair catch made at the 18. So the Oregon defense really does its job after the Tigers stepped up big. Four and a half to play, and Herbert will go back to work trying to chew on some clock. Well, stay tuned after this frantic finish, except on the West Coast, your late local news, most of these ABC stations, and of course, Sports Center over on ESPN will have highlights of a busy opening Saturday in college football. Scott Van Pelt, two and the Tide debuted. A couple of SEC teams that went down. Coco Goff, Naomi Osaka from the U.S. Open, the 15-year-old phenom knocked out tonight by the defending champion something to keep in mind the timeouts 431 Auburn all three of their timeouts well that's the man they've gone to Jalen Red but the Tigers know that too and Daniel Thomas was there to knock him down stays inbounds picks up about four figures to be a mix of high percentage throws and maybe C.J. Burdell run as they try to just, if nothing else, Kirk, improve field position. We snap it at 12 in the play clock, and they get it to Red again. And he's going to be knocked down right near the marker. Yeah, they'll move it. It's a first down Oregon. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm very surprised that at this point in the game, on early downs, that they're giving them that easy throw. I, I, I just feel that at this point, they've got to try to take that away. He, he's, he's not giving you a chance to get to him. The ball is out so quickly. It's an extension, basically, of their running game. Quick, easy throws with soft coverage. He's just finding the matchup that he wants, and if they're sitting off of him seven or eight yards, he's making the throw, letting him to try to do, do something after the catch. Nine catches for Red tonight. Verdell straight up the middle. Test the midsection and picks up about three on first down, and this will take it under three minutes to go. This is a battle of wills, and you're right. It's this side of the ball that everyone's talked about. 
for the entire week. People anxious to see who would win this, this battle with Oregon's O-line against the Auburn D-line. And this side of the, of the, of the ball is going to probably go down to decide the outcome of the game. Ducks not yet at 100 yards rushing, averaging about three yards a carry tonight. It's been tough sledding. And now Die comes in for Verdell. Auburn holding on to those three timeouts until maybe they give up another first down. Herbert rolls on second and seven. Pressure escapes, but not for long. Sacked at the 24. Owen Papo, Tyrone Truesdell, and now they'll use a timeout. Now they do a better job of taking away. Here's the cushion. The, the route is going to go to the outside, but watch how quickly Tut works around and stays and takes away the outcut. That outcut's been there all day. This time, good job of accelerating, putting his foot in the ground, taking that, that option away for Herbert, and he had nowhere to go. He could throw it away or try to scramble. I'm surprised he didn't throw the ball away. Third time he's been sacked tonight. Just a ferocity on the Auburn defensive side after halftime. They are flying downhill. Took time away from Herbert that time, and now what do you call in third and 14? You'd love to not stop the clock with an incompletion. You got, I think you either go with one of those quick throws, high percentage throws where they catch it and get tackled inbounds, or you just run the football. You, you want to force Auburn to have to use this second timeout. Jacob Breeland, number 27, a senior, can often be a clutch receiver in this situation. Herbert is without four or five receivers they would like to have in this ballgame, all of them out injured. Die is the bat. Huge play. Has time, delivers, yeah. caught by Die out of the backfield, nowhere to run. Papo, the freshman, stopped him, it's fourth down. Yeah, that's, that's what you want if you're Oregon. Make Auburn use that second timeout. Auburn rushed three, dropped eight. Again, a little bit of a different look, something they've not shown a ton of tonight. So Auburn does what they need to do, getting Oregon off the field, and Oregon does what they wanted to do, try to make the, the Tigers use a few of these timeouts. In Oregon, the opportunity to make a huge statement victory for their program, for the Pac-12 Conference, just trying to hang on here. It's been Auburn pressing hard. And now the true freshman quarterback is going to get the football back and a chance to engineer a heroic drive in his debut. Maimon has been booming punts tonight all night. It's another long punt, not terribly high and not his best. We were there in Eugene when the place was coming unhinged a year ago and the Ducks had a chance for a win. They led Stanford by 17. The place was going crazy. It, it looked like one of those nights. We've been there many times when you go to Eugene and take on Oregon. They were dominating the game. Stanford's ranked in the top 10. I think they're up at number seven, and then this happened. Yeah, the high snap, it's the scoop and score, that a shock play that completely turned momentum. The Ducks never fully recovered from that. Bryce Love got loose for a touchdown, but they all they had to do was take a knee a couple of times, and Verdell had the ball punched out with a minute to go. The Cardinal eventually won it in overtime. Sorry, Ducks fans, for that nightmare flashback. Can the defense make a stop this time? From the 40. Next, near side, Seth Williams can't spin free. Remember that Anders Carlson has tremendous range as a field goal kicker. He tried nine of them last year beyond 50. Only made two, but he's capable. If he 53, get him to 53, he's got a chance. Nix takes off. He's out near midfield. They don't they don't need that many yards. You get a couple first downs. They're in the range to at least try their luck with Carlson. Nice sophomore. Whitlow refreshed and still very effective here in the second half with the patience between the tackles. Third down. Nix has a lot of time. Lost the ball far side. It's incomplete. They wanted a flag on Graham, who was covering Canella, didn't get it, and now here's the ball game, fourth down. The ball is underthrown, and I thought the receiver did a nice job, Canella coming back, and boy, that's pretty, that's pretty physical. Graham grabbing on to the jersey, trying to work his way back to the football. I'm surprised they didn't call that one. Oh, yeah, they grabbed him around the waist. Yeah. Has to be pass interference. 
Not a reviewable play, of course. And now Malzahn back calling the plays for the first time at two and a half years. Has to make a big play call here. Here we go. Mix under center. Rolls out. Will he try to run it? Yes, dives. First down, Auburn. It's right at midfield. And they oh. keep up alive. They might take a look to see where his right knee went down and to see the spot of the ball. How about the kid? The kid that's wanted to be this quarterback his whole life in his first start. Game on the line, receivers covered. He's got to take off and run. He has two receivers out to the right. No three. Nobody's open. Dives for that first down marker and get, looks like he gets it by about a half of the football. That's what they're going to look at right there. Right there. Right. The knee is down. The ball just had to get to the 50. That's right where the yard line is. So is the ball across the 50? It's difficult from that angle. Right there is where the uh, action will be stopped. Here's a better look. Knee down now. He's got it. And yeah. it looks like his He's spot was right on there. Yep. You got to do that in real time at full speed. That's actually a heck of a spot. Sure is. So now, if the call stands, first down at the 50, they only have to go about 15 yards to have a chance yep. to feel comfortable, Kirk, perhaps 20, 25 yards. Look at that. Nose to the ball. Look at Bo Nix. Look at Bo Nix taking control. This is what everybody wants to know. What did Bo Nix do to win the job? It's these little things like this. There's his father who played, of course, great quarterback here for the Auburn Tigers. Coached in college, now a great high school coach. He's a coach's son. He knows the little things that gave him the edge as a freshman to win this job. He's calling these guys around like he's been there his whole life, making sure these senior linemen, everybody's on the same page. Does this feel eerily similar to the only other time these two teams have met? Except at the beginning of the season, at the end of the season. Except the field goal was about, <laughs> about 20 yards. At that point, it was a 19-all game. Auburn was trying to drive for a game-winning field goal. Booby does not want to run backwards, but Oregon traps him for a loss. Bryson Young, the stud backer, makes a play. And the clock is winding down. They have one timeout to spare. I'm very surprised by that play call. Terrible effort over here on the right by Seth. The, uh, the wide receiver, Seth Williams, 18. He just kind of let his guy come in and make the play that time, Bryson Young. They spotted it back at the 50, so second and 10. Nix in traffic, delivers a strike, stretching near the marker is Spencer Nye. We're going to call timeout. 31 seconds, not yet in comfortable field goal range. They could give it a whirl from 58. But Spencer Nye from Houston, back in his home state, the ex-walk-on fullback makes his first touch of the night count. Board wrap-up show with Cassidy Hubbard after the game. This is just, I know it's not identical, but it, it is kind of spookily like Cam yeah. Newton, the yeah. veteran quarterback. Yeah. Heisman sees him trying to get the Tigers down in position to kick a game-winning field goal. You look at Carlson there, 6'5", 6'5", 213. And Mike Black, who's your spotter and helps us out up here, does so much great work for us. A former kicker himself really studies these kickers. And not only does he have a career long at 53, watching Mike watching him in warm-up said he has the leg from 60 and in. So he's got I the mean, bloodlines too. Remember Daniel Carlson now with the Raiders? Yeah. He holds the SEC all-time career scoring record. Top five in FBS history. So Anders carrying on the family tradition. Let's see if he gets a chance here. Remember, third down, no timeouts. Clock stops. If it's an incompletion, a first down, or you get out of bounds. No sacks. No sacks for Patrick Nix. You're right. Any play where he's tackled in the field to play short of a first down creates serious urgency for Auburn. Whitlow tries to bounce it. It is a first down. It'll stop the clock momentarily at the 38. And he fired the ball, kill the clock. Clock stop for the first down. Get the lineman up, fire it right into the ground to kill the clock. Indoor conditions, it's a nice carpet to kick off of, but you couldn't feel comfortable. Please reset the clock to 26 seconds. They get two seconds back. Seconds on the Every clock. second Please. could count. They're just going to kill this clock, reset, huddle up, get the right play call.
You know you've got a kicker who's capable from here, but his percentage is not good beyond 50. They kept trying him early in the season. He was two for nine it's, beyond 50. That's from 56 in pregame. I mean, this just gives you an idea. I know there isn't a rush, and you know, you've got the, the automatic hold there, so it's easy, but it's just the leg strength of this young man. But Auburn's saying, let's get closer. Yes. Who said it? So is Carlson. <laughs> yeah. Next from the pocket, going to throw, launches it near side, incomplete. Trying to make a back shoulder throw to Seth Williams. They trusted the quarterback to throw it downfield, Kirk. Sure did. And I, I don't blame Gus for trusting him based on just watching him play. And I'm sure the things he's seen throughout the spring and the summer. Look at his eyes. I mean, it, he doesn't look like a deer in the headlights. He looks like he's in a, his element. Just a matter of making the throw and, and somebody coming up here. Again, third down, 10, and no timeouts. Ducks come after him. Nix gets it out. Caught! Williams out of bounds with 16 seconds, and now they are in field goal range. Poise. He's in rhythm. One hitch. Ball is out. Throws it exactly where it needs to be towards the sideline. Williams is able to beat, get away, get separation from the defender. Now they can play a little safer. But they're not going to. Nix is back. Throws it downfield. Caught. Touchdown, Williams. And the legend of this legacy quarterback at Auburn is born in his college debut. A touchdown pass with nine seconds to play. I wonder after the play, unsportsmanlike conduct for spiking the ball. Offense number 18. That's his first. That 15-yard penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. We'll attempt to try. A 26-yard touchdown pass. Auburn leads for the first time tonight. They were down 15 late third quarter. You think old Bo Nix, when he's laying in his bed as a 10 or 11-year-old dreaming of being a quarterback at Auburn, ever thought that his first start could <laughs> potentially be like this? And Carlson, who had to have his mind wrapped around a game-winning field goal attempt from long distance, is instead on for a PAT. And Oregon, in an opportunity for a huge statement win, may taste heartbreak again. Wait, go back to the matchup. You just said now they can go conservative. Gus Malzahn said, nope, <laughs> I trust my freshman. Under throws it. And Seth Williams does a good job of coming back to the ball. By the way, he, he's kind of slow playing it. Gets in front of the safety. He has a big catch radius at 6'3". He's a big guy at 245 pounds. But the ball being underthrown allowed him to come back and undercut McQuarrie. That's why, or actually, that wasn't McQuarrie. Actually, he gets behind. McKinley. Yeah, McKinley gets behind Graham. Does a good job getting behind in front of McKinley and up in the air. But his big body, the ball being underthrown, and Auburn scores the go-ahead score with nine seconds. I, I, I'm with you. You're thinking, all right, get it in the middle of the field. Try to <laughs> spot the ball. Dead center, Patrick Nix, the quarterback in the 90s, coached his son Bo in high school and knows that his kid has dreamt about this forever. Gus pretty calm, like he knew the kid was going to respond, and he trusted him. That's just incredible. Yeah. I mean, he made a couple ill-advised throws early in the game, bad-looking freshman mistakes, but grew up fast in the second half. Yeah, I mean, he has so many moments tonight that he's, it's obvious. What did you say, 19, four, was it 46? 46, yep. Last time a true freshman for Auburn started. Doesn't happen very often. You're going to make a lot of mistakes, but he's just stayed in there, battled and fought, and he's given Auburn a chance to win this game. Williams spiked the ball, cost him 15, so they have to kick off from the 20. Special teams has been a real problem. You, you think it's unlikely they're going to give the Ducks a chance to return a ball deep, right? Now they kind of scooted along the ground. Oregon out of timeouts. 
And strutting straight up the field and making a dangerous return and still running and tackled down to the 35 with three seconds to go. Ducks are going to have a shot at the end zone. Davis nearly and, broke it. And, and now you're thinking, I'm looking at the score, right? Why didn't they go for two, right? Why, why would they go for two to give him potentially up by a touchdown? Now you give Justin Herbert a chance to have a shot at the end zone. And you just wonder in a game like this, you knew the losing team was going to be bone points left on the board, but the drop touchdown pass by Addison, the missed chip shot. Those three points have yeah. been pretty precious right now. I'm still going back to why didn't why would you go for two? What's the difference between being up by five or, or six or yeah I, there's no difference I'd, I'd rather be up by seven what if he ends up hitting this hail mary so can the veteran senior answer the heroics of the freshman on the final play triple zero on the clock herbert looking for a receiver launches over the end zone and auburn survives A comeback victory, a game-winning touchdown pass with nine seconds to go in Bo Nix's college debut. And Auburn's defense stepped up huge and gave their offense a chance to get back in this game. Wow! A chance to exhale and hear from Gus Malzahn with Maria Taylor. All right, Coach, nine seconds left on the clock, and you call the play that allows your freshman quarterback to throw a touchdown strike. Why did you have the confidence yeah, in him? You know, we, we didn't play our best. you got to give them credit. They're a really good team. Came out with a hot start. We turned the ball over. Uh, we didn't play our best, but we found a way to win. Uh, real proud of this group. And I think you'll see that team uh, win a whole lot of games, and uh, I think we're the one of the best teams in the country. What kind of resilience was required of yeah. this team today? You know, we, we got we got a lot of character, we got a lot of guts, a lot of leadership. Halftime, it was kind of tough, but the, the guys just believed we were going to win the game. And our defense came up big, and of course our offense, we struggled a little bit. When it mattered, Seth Williams made the play to win the game. All right, thanks for your time. Thank you. Gus, gloomier than I thought he was going to be. That's a thrilling victory. He was pointing to the things they could have done better and giving credit to Oregon, but... Knicks makes the big play at the end, a, really a total team effort after a rugged first half for Auburn. Yeah, Auburn did what they needed to do defensively to give Knicks and the offense a chance to win the game. This is the kind of win that can really springboard you into some momentum as you get ready for the rest of the season. For Oregon, back to the drawing board. Oh, the Tigers have a meat grinder schedule ahead, but tonight they win it with nine seconds to go. Fresno State USC over on ESPN. Time for the Ford wrap-up. Let's go to Cassidy Hubbard.